a championship matchup between Western Carolina and Southern Illinois. This Division I National Championship game brought to you by Chevrolet, official cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. Chevrolet and you taking charge. By Light Beer from Miller, everything you always wanted in a beer and less. By Goodyear, makers of Arriva, the all-season radio. And by GMAC, the financing people from General Motors. This Division I-AA title game being played this year at Johnson Haygood Stadium, the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina. And here come the two teams. Southern Illinois wearing the dark shirts and Western Carolina in the white. 85 teams make up the 1AA division. The number of scholarships, stadium size, and schedule determine the classification. And it is a warm, comfortable, sunny day in Charleston, South Carolina. The temperature in the middle 50s. I'm Keith Jackson along with Coach Frank Broyles. And Frank, this is a matchup between two teams that will paint your helmet. I mean, they will get after you. The Western Carolina defense good but perhaps not quite as awesome as that of southern illinois well western carolina any place on the field any down is a pass which is evidenced by the fact they've averaged 48 in these playoff games on the other hand uh, southern illinois believes in defense championships one on defense they're very strong and very aggressive and this puts into play uh, interesting matchup the strength of the offense versus the strength of the defense two outstanding receivers rashid and kaiser 148 uh, combined receptions and 18 touchdowns against two outstanding defensive backs, All-American Taylor, All-Conference Daniels with 14 combined interceptions. Very interesting matchups. This El Southern Illinois team collectively has picked off 34 passes this year. Keith, they are very, very aggressive. They, the defensive back is going to jump right on the receivers. It's going to be beast of famine, and that's what we'll look for, either an interception or maybe a touchdown. And we already have in the house, with more people coming in, the largest crowd ever to see a 1AA championship game. We're at the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina, a whole region so deep in American history. We'll have fun this afternoon. Your Chevy dealer's big USA One year-end sales drive is on. They're out to sell 250,000. It's ranked ninth in 1AA, 11-2 and 1 on the season. Southern Illinois, 12-1, stumbled just one time in the season. Uh, they finished the 1AA season ranked number one in their classification. Southern Illinois kicking off. Eric Rashid is the deep man for Western Carolina. It is fielded short upfield by number 31, John Preston. And Preston comes up near the 20 before he is rolled back. They're playing on real grass here at the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina. Jeff Gilbert, quarterback, will open 6'2", 190, a junior for them. And the running backs are Melvin Dorsey. He transferred from the University of Georgia. Billy Ray Jones is the fullback. He's a junior also from Georgia, 190 pounds. Eric Rashid, 5'8", 155. And Christy Kaiser, 5'7", 165. And they are very, very quick people. Kaiser playing with a very sore rib cage. And Gilbert on the first snap works out of the I formation, short of his 20. Here you've got a double reverse going with Eric Rashid carrying the ball, trapped behind the line of scrimmage, gets some help, gets around the corner, and gets up across the 20 to the 22. So the quickness of Rashid prevented him from losing about 10. Up front for Western Carolina. These are the big people. Eddie West, the tight end, 6'1", 200, a junior. Marty Reagan at tackle, 6'2", and 290. Tim Hill at guard, 6'3", and 220. The center is Steve Taylor. He's 6'4", 245. Charles Stevenson at guard, 6'3", and 220. And Mike Herndon, 6'2", and 245. Keith, I believe the injured player on the field is Collins, the number one uh, tackle for the uh, Southern Illinois football team. That would be a very tough loss for him. Let's go back and, and uh, see the last play. It was a reverse, a little razzle-dazzle on the first play of the ball game where the quarterback is going to pitch back to Williams. Williams is going to hand back or ladle the ball back to Rashid, who has 4-4 speed. You can see the quickness of this young man as he has already uh, been the on the receiving end of uh, something like 87 passes. And you can see a terrific block by Williams, number 20, on Collins. 
Collins is still not up at this time. Leonard Williams had started at the tailback position in this ball game instead of Dorsey. He's a 195 pounder and he really did saw him off. He laid a solid block on him. The defensive unit for Southern Illinois would uh, the starters would line up up front with uh, Dan Wetzel, Ed Norman, Sterling Haywood, Ken Foster, and Mike Brushia along the front. The linebackers being Granville Butler, Fabre Collins, and the defensive secondary, Donnell Daniel, the left corner, the right corner, Terry Taylor. Uh, Taylor is an All-American, and Daniel is an All-Conference, in fact, the Conference Player of the Year. So those are two widely heralded cornerbacks. William Thomas is the strong safety, and the free safety is Greg Ship. That's fundamentally a junior-senior secondary for Southern Illinois. And now Collins is up, and he'll be walking off the field on his own. So he's going to be all right, and we'll be back in just a moment. As a relief pitcher, everybody thought I had it easy. See Pat here? He'd pitch his heart out for eight innings or so. And... Collins, all right. Going to the sidelines. Here's your second down snap now. Second down and seven for Western Carolina. The Catamount. That simply means the Cat of the Mountain. And they've been playing like it of late. Here's the pitch. It goes to Leonard Williams. 195 pounder from Greensboro is on his way up the sideline. Tremendous blocking to the wide side of the field, and he runs for a first down at the 40 before Donnell Daniel knocks him out of bounds. From the end zone, watch the blocking to the right of your screen. Number 35 is just a freshman. Billy Ray Jones, a fullback. He's the lead blocker. He turns in and picks up the inside pursuit. Williams has good speed. The defensive backs were covering the receivers, spreading downfield, and man for man, that was the reason. No support till Daniel, number nine, makes the play. And the Western Carolina operates first down from the 40 with Melvin Dorsey now in at the tailback position, relieving Williams, and Gilbert is back to throw it. Loops it into the air down the side lines it is overthrown intended receiver Eric Rashid and number four Donnell Daniel the left cornerback was inside his shirt that's one of the trademarks of these two youngsters now Daniel is six feet 190 a senior from Elgin Illinois and Taylor 510 175 a senior out of Youngstown Ohio and they really stick on you Kaiser comes out now and Tyron Delap goes in He's a little bigger at 5'11", 175. He's the split in for Western Carolina. Second down and 10 for the Cats from their own 40. Just starting the ball game here in Charleston, South Carolina. A little quick pop to the tight end, Eddie West. And West doesn't get much out of it as he is tumbled to the sidelines. Defending against the tight end was Greg Ship, the free safety. For the quarter... Uh, Kind of describe the quarterbacks. They're not runners. They are pure passes. The coaches say we do not want our quarterbacks to run. We won't, we're not likely to see any option plays today. He picked up about a yard, call it third down and nine. The ball is just over the 40. You can see how much Western Carolina relied on the forward pass during the season, and this is their 15th game of the season. And Gilbert goes back to throw on third and nine to the sidelines. He overthrew. Eric Rashid. So twice now he's tried to go to the sidelines and twice he is overthrown. Here's there is one. not much wind to bother them. Keith, uh, the, here's the matchup. You're going to see Taylor All-American number 21 playing man for man on Rashid number one. Give him a little bit of a cushion, but the change in direction is the key. The rush forced Gilbert to throw the ball high and goes incomplete. We've got a penalty flag thrown on the field. The official, the referee is C.C. Daly. All of the officials are out of the ACC. Now the flag's picked up. And they're ready to go with Steve Cornegi in to do the punting. He is a sophomore from Warsaw, North Carolina, averaging right at 41 yards per punt. Southern Illinois has blocked nine punts this season. They send nine but can't get it. Donnell Daniel goes back, watches the ball take, a Southern Illinois bounce, and the Salukis from Carbondale will have good field position after only a 26-yard punt by Cornegi. The starting unit in the backfield for Southern Illinois, Rick Johnson, quarterback, 6'2", 185, good, solid football player at that position. Derek Taylor at 5'9", 180, Corky Field is the fullback at 5'11", and 205. Cecil Ratliff is a wide receiver at 5'11 and 170, and the split end is James Stevenson at 5'11 and 160. Southern Illinois wearing the dark shirt come up for the first snap of the ball game. Rick Johnson back to throw it on first down, setting up a screen. Gets the screen set with Corky Field, the fullback, and he breaks it 
He goes for the first down across the 45. So they move it from the 34 up to the just short of the 45, but it is a first down for Southern Illinois. A screen pass is always good on the first play of the ball game because teams are anxious to make a good play. They're eager, and they cross the line of scrimmage, setting up a very easy screen, pitch out to field number 44, picks up his block, it weaves his way back inside for a first down. Ray Dempsey is the head coach of Southern Illinois, and Bobby Waters, the head man at Western Carolina. From just outside the 44, first down for Southern Illinois to the pass again. Very quick pop. It goes to Javel Heggs. And Heggs is hit at the 48 of Western Carolina. So Heggs, a senior out of St. Louis, slips into the lineup at the flanker spot, slipped out into the flat and made the catch. Here's Bob Waters. He's in his 15th year at Western Carolina, built a fine program, was a professional football player for the San Francisco 49ers. In fact, he was the original quarterback in the shotgun offense of Red Hickey. It is second down and three. Seven-yard pickup on the pass play to Heggs. The salute is now now on the Catamount side of the field. Western Carolina showing a five-man front. They send it up the middle, and I mean they roll up Derek Taylor. The linebacker stepped in there and really whacked him. The offensive front for Southern Illinois, Gary Shepard, the tight end, 6'2 and 230. The tackle is Brad Pilgard at 6'7 and 260. Tim Redman at guard, 6'2, 240. Tom Ball, the center at 6'4, 255. They block 5'11, 230. And Ralph Van Dyke at tackle 6'7 and 220. They're big up front. They are big. They're two sophomores, one junior, and two freshmen in their starting lineup. And here's Ray Dempsey, the head coach. There was a loss on the play of a yard. Back to the 49. It is third down and four for Southern Illinois. And they go to the air over the middle. Quick pop to Casey Shepard the tight end and Shepard pulls it in for a first down he is at the Western Carolina 42 Rick Johnson is a fifth year senior quarterback had, had hold 16 school records he recognizes the blitz he changes his pattern real quickly and goes right over the middle to the easiest man to hit the short throw to the tight end for another first down Gary Shepard is out of uh, Pomona California at 6 2 230 carry is a big target the Salukis at the 42 of Carolina. Tony Adams in it split in for Southern Illinois. And Rick Johnson, long count, checking off, hands the ball away, goes to Falky Field, the fullback. And Field from Berlin Heights, Ohio, pounds his way down to about the 36. Ray Dip Coach Rick Ray Dempsey told me that we are known for our defense, but we're pretty good on offense also. The Western Carolina defensive unit lines up with Clyde Simmons, Mark King, Mark Buff Moyer, and Lewis Cooper. The linebackers are Ricky Fade, Paul Abraham, and Bernard Jones. The secondary, Miles Nicholson, Tiger Green, Richard Dukes, and Steve Marshall. It is second down and four. And it's a short four at the 36 of Carolina. <laughs> Ball is handed off again to field the fullback. And he's at the 34. So they'll be looking at third and short. Third down and about three. The ball right at the 34 of Western Carolina. Western Carolina is located up in the hills and mountains. Beautiful countryside around Asheville, over there in the western part of the state. And the city is Culloway. A lot of good Indian names up there, Keith, in the towns. Really pretty country. Smoky Mountain. Third down, about two and a half. And again, they give it to the fullback and nothing doing. It is Taylor stepping from the left side position. He ran right into Ricky Pate. Pate went jawbone with him, got his helmet on his numbers, and earned him away. Pate, 220-pounder. Yeah, Pate is a good linebacker. You can see he diagnoses the... <clears throat> the play immediately, which means you attack, you fire, you blitz across in the gap, short yardage, you have to make the player cross the line, and he does. Just a fine play by the linebacker, Ricky Payton. A loss of a yard on the play, back to the 35, and in comes the Southern Illinois place kicker, Ron Miller. Ron Miller will be trying from 52 yards, and he's hitting it out of the hold of Darren Nixon. His longest in his career, 48. Ball is fumbled on the snap, and Western Carolina pounces on the ball. Back at the 43, Clyde Simmons, a defensive end. 
So they don't handle it cleanly, and it blows up in their face, and Western Carolina goes first down from its 43. Let's, let's go back and see what happened. I'm not sure it wasn't a fake field goal. Might have been. Uh, yes, I believe it was a fake field goal pass, but uh, the uh, quarterback, number three, I guess it was, just dropped the ball. And... Simmons was there to make the play. Number 96, a very fine defensive end. He was crashing on the play. It looked time. like the uh, kicker's arm might have hit. It did. Dixon is yeah. He was standing up to move out of it. Or whatever. It didn't work. And uh, Western Carolina goes to work with the ball from their 43. Southern Illinois showing a five-man front. Gilbert. Gets his pass off. Pass is complete to Melvin Dorsey out of the backfield. He's a 200-pounder from Saltee, Georgia. He was over at Athens at the University of Georgia, but he was one of the group backed up behind Herschel Walker. And Dorsey, Dorsey admits that's the reason yeah. he left. He, he was an outstanding uh, high school player out of Georgia, one of the top recruits, but he wanted to play, and he transferred and has had a good career. Dorsey's got it. Gets around the corner. Terry Taylor, but not until he picks up a first down at the Southern Illinois 40. There is no substitute for speed. Here's a clear example. Dorsey, number 34, doesn't have good blocking right here. He wants to cut inside. Nothing there. Very wisely, he pops outside, and the freshman Jones continues to lead block and make good plays, and you can see that uh, Dorsey has the speed, makes a good run. Leonard Williams comes in now. Dorsey out for a breather. Williams has the ball. Missed by one man, missed by two men. And when it looked like he might be nailed behind the line of scrimmage, he just keeps on working at it, and he picked up about three yards. Let's talk about the Southern Illinois defense. When I say they're aggressive and intimidating, I mean that they put most of their people right up on the line of scrimmage, dare you to throw the football, try to entice you to throw the football. They do a lot of bluffing, disguising their assignments and their defensive schemes. If you watch them right here, move around, put them all right up on the line of scrimmage. Call it second down at about eight. The ball is at the Southern Illinois 38. No score, first quarter. The 1AA championship game. Ball is handed off to Williams, number 20. Good blocking on the front. Down goes his helmet. He gets away, runs right through two Salukis, and he is finally pulled down by Terry Taylor inside the 15. Oh, the blocking uh, of Western Carolina was outstanding. Fake pass and run. Let the defense cross the line. Let them take themselves out of the play. Create a natural opening for the ball carrier. You can see the area that Williams had to run, but right here is we show we see his ability as he makes the defensive back miss him and makes a fine run. And it's first down. The football is inside the 15. Pitch comes back to Dorsey. And Dorsey is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Sliding in to make the play. Number 53, Brescia. Keith, if you're going to play the sweep in college football, you have to get penetration as we look at Dorsey's rec numbers for this year. Penetration on the corner. Stops the sweep. Good play by the defense on that last step. Brescia comes out of Las Vegas, Nevada, the defensive end. The ball is back on the 16. Loss of two, second down, and 12. Every defensive man right up on the line of scrimmage. Well, they really do dare you, don't they? Here's Gilbert on a rollout, gets protection, goes for the corner and misses. And we've got another Southern Illinois man hurt down on the field. Number 36 it is. I'm sure that uh, Rashid wishes he had cut his uh, pattern off a little quicker because his quarterback, Gilbert, didn't have time to wait as long enough for him to try to get open against that's, the match. That's Sterling man. Haywood, the nose guard, sophomore out of Youngstown, Ohio, who is hurt on the play. He was holding a knee. Now they're going to sort it out and see what his problem is. Well, Sterling Haywood is a very fine football player, only weighs 213 pounds, 5'10", not the average size nose guard, but he has 10 sacks and eight tackles for losses. We've got a defensive holding call going against Southern Illinois on the play, and that's going to mark off 
10 yards, moves it on down to the eight, where it is going to be second down and about four for Western Carolina. There are your officials. They are all out of the Atlantic Coast Conference, except for the clock operator, Mac Irwin, who is from the uh, Southern Conference. And, of course, Western Carolina plays in the Southern Conference. We've got a timeout for the injured player, Haywood, with no score in the first quarter, but the Catamounts are threatening. Is the season for McNugget Mania. Now, second down and four, Western Carolina sitting on the eight-yard line on the Southern Illinois end of the field, trying to get the first points of this championship game. Dorsey. And Dorsey runs for a couple down to about the six. Western Carolina it fought their way through the Southern Conference and came in as an at-large team in the uh, Division I AA playoffs. But then they defeated Colgate 24-23 after being behind 23 to nothing in the first half. They defeated Holy Cross 28 to 21. And then they beat Furman 14 to 7, a team they have not defeated since 1972. And I want to tell you, that's three tough nuts right there. They had to come from behind in all three ball games. Good character. Third down, they need about three for the first down. They're going to go with the same kind of a play. It goes to Dorsey, and Dorsey, second effort, gets him across the five, and he is close to the first down. Fabre, Collins, and Ken Foster combined defensively for the Salukis. Coaches tend to grade their running backs by how much yardage they make after they run out of block. That was a perfect illustration of Dorsey making three yards after he was hit at the line of scrimmage and his blocking had left him. And they've got the first down. First and goal from the four. And a timeout is called by Western Carolina. There's some confusion. Uh, Gilbert may not have had the people on the field that he wanted. May not have liked the play that was sent in. And this is certainly no place to be confused. So they call time to talk about it. Each year, Ryder buys thousands of new trucks to rent here and leave there. Rent a truck, huh? What's the matter? Clutch you burn out? Oh, no, no. Oh, it's an automatic. Oh, the power steering going, huh? Oh, no. It's it's a new truck. Well, what's wrong? Do you have a restroom? Restroom. So rent a new truck from Ryder and save yourself a lot of headaches. What was that? Another one of them new Ryder trucks. Oh. Newer trucks make Ryder the best truck money can rent. Ah, the proud owner of a spanking new car. When you get a new car, talk to an independent traveler's agent. See if you qualify for the traveler's repair or replacement collision coverage. It insures you for up to five years for the full purchase price of the same type of car you just bought. There are more expensive things the traveler's insures, but to the guy whose mid-sized car was just turned into a compact, none more important. America's taxpayers are demanding accountability in education. High school activities involve over one half of the students of most schools at a net cost of one to three percent of most budgets. That's the best bargain in education, and it lasts a lifetime. Here you can see the Western Carolina team and coaches. They're all the way down to the very edge of the coaching box so we can get close to the action. Double tight end that's alignment. They've got Eddie West and Alonzo Carmichael in there. Eric Washid comes off the field. They're going to try to pound it in. As Gilbert turns, pitches that ball outside to Williams. Williams is chased behind the line of scrimmage and hit behind the line of scrimmage. So Southern Illinois just lined up with 10 people up front and sent them. And they got him back on the 10-yard line. We coaches call this style of defense a sellout, meaning you're bringing everybody. If they throw the ball, it's an easy touchdown. But should they run wide, you've got penetration. You've got more people than they can block. And the result is a loss, even after Williams makes a good run to get away from a couple. So it is second down and goal. Ball on the 10. Darcy and Jones set up behind Gilbert. And they go back to Kaiser, send him wide to the left, Rashid to the right, and Gilbert back to throw. Looks over the middle. He drops the football, and Southern Illinois has got it! Mike Russia, the defensive end, slashed his way inside and stripped the ball and rolled over on top of it, and Western Carolina is turned away. We should get this number. Southern Illinois has 
taken away 61 turnovers this season. 34 interceptions, 27 fumbles. Right here, you can see why their defense believes that the championships are won with this unit. That's Ed Norman, number Ed 74. Ed Norman, number 74, strips it free, and now they stop the threat. And they take over the football in rather decent field position out on the 18. And here goes Derek Taylor. Taylor, 180-pound junior out of Chicago, is booked on by Bernard Jones, a junior from Spartanburg, South Carolina. The biggest shift in momentum, I think, happens as we look at the turnovers for the two football teams. This is the season right here. It doesn't include the playoffs. But uh, the biggest turn in the momentum is when you think you're going to score and you don't, then it shifts dramatically. That is second down and three. Ball just outside the 25. No score in the first quarter. The ball given to Corky Field, the fullback, and he's game tackle behind the line of scrimmage. Back around the 24, Clyde Simmons and Mark King. Western, to play. Western Carolina decided we'll get a little bit of that penetration, so they came up with virtually the entire defensive unit and sent them in for a blitz, a running blitz, that is, not a passing blitz, right in the teeth of the play. No game. Dangerous for Rick Johnson, a good passer. Three minutes and 45 seconds to go in the first quarter. The game being played at the Citadel in Charleston. Ray Dempsey, coach of Southern Illinois in his eighth year, Coach for the Detroit Lions in 1975. Johnson to throw the ball. Looking, looking, looking. Gang tackle behind the line of scrimmage. 96 Simmons again in there along with number 73 King. Oh, there's a big loss on that play. Once when you when you blitz your people and your quarterback cannot find the receiver, you're really in trouble. Now Stevenson number five is wide open on this play. But uh, Johnson never saw him. You can see that uh, Stevens, number five, a junior college transfer, is open, but uh, Johnson did not want to throw it. Drew Morrison comes in to punt, averaging just over 39 yards per kick. He might have a little bit of a breeze at his back. And Tiger Green has blocked six punts for uh, Western Carolina. High snap, but he pulls it down and gets it out. Not a very good kick, but he's lucky to get a hold of it at all. And he shanked it out of bounds, actually hooked it out of bounds. And it's going to be Western Carolina's ball way over on the Southern Illinois side of the field at the 36-yard line. That was a 21-yard punt. So the two punters have uh, been rather mediocre in their first two efforts, one of them for 26 and the other for 21. You've got a timeout on the field with 2 minutes and 47 seconds to play in the first quarter. Folks, the weather is about to turn downright mean again. Snow staff is still working on the little nose guard, Sterling Haywood. It is cartilage damage. He will probably not be back this afternoon. He is in a great deal of pain right now, Keith. Tim Brandt, who does the hard work in our coverage, in our presentation of college football, working on the field again today with us. And it's first down for Western Carolina at the 36th of Southern Illinois. Back goes Gilbert to throw it. Goes down the sidelines, and it's just incomplete. Intended for Eric Rashid. And the little junior from Decatur, Georgia, was just a half a step away from six points. And my old hometown, Decatur, Georgia. You see Daniel, number four, is covered him man for man. He runs with him, tries to stay in his hip pocket, but Rashid gets a little bit of acceleration. The pass was right on his fingertips, but it falls incomplete. Gilbert is now two out of six for eight yards of the ball game, second down and ten at the Southern Illinois 36 with Leonard Williams and John Preston, the setbacks now. Now they send uh, Williams up into a slot. Take a flanker out of him. That gives him three fast people immediately available to him. And Gilbert back to throw it. He whips it out to the sidelines, and it is uh, incomplete. Caught it out of bounds. Caught by Tyrone Delap. But the junior from Winston-Salem, North Carolina, was out of bounds. Delap is the wide receiver. He's the outside man. I mean, he's going to try to get over the boundary where it is the toughest part of the field to cover by the defense. 21 Taylor has given him a big cushion, thinking he was going deep, but the ball was thrown too late. The timing wasn't there for the receiver to catch the ball in bounds. So it is third down and 10 for Western Carolina. They had the ball first and goal down on the four. Wound up tumbling it. And now they're knocking on the door again. Big play here. Gilbert getting some pressure. Screen pass out to Williams. Williams is caught and brought down by number 54. Ashley Sledge, defensive end. 
Keith, that was an incredible play. Had Slants not made the tackle, Southern Illinois backs were decoyed out, playing man for man. It would have been a long run, if not a touchdown. Watch the play by number 54 on the right of the screen. You can see the opening field. Williams has the block. Is the only man right there. It's Slant, and somehow he makes the play and stops the long game. And in comes Steve Carnegie. Nope, going to go for the uh, field goal try. Dean Biasucci. And he has the win to his back, and he kicked the 52 yarder last week. This will be a 51 yard try. The hold is good, the ball is down, and it is no good. Just missed it. And so, once again, Western Carolina is turned away from scoring with two minutes and 23 seconds to play in the first quarter. Keith, in, uh, with regard to the wind, it appears to me that it's blowing from our right to our left, but it also is swirling and coming across the field in time, which makes it more difficult for the kickers, uh, or the punters, or the field goal. So here comes Southern Illinois now from their 34. First down. No score. And Johnson back to throw it. Swings it quickly out here to Derek Taylor. And Taylor getting some blocking around the corner comes to the 45. And he's got a first down, looks like. From the end zone, you can see a little screen. Just uh, coaches treat this as a running play right out to the tailback on the line of scrimmage. Watch number 70, who's an offensive guard. He is going to be the key man. He'll make the key block right to your left of your screen. He's blocking on number 14, Dukes, their strong safety. He seals him to the inside, and then you pick, then they pick up number 59, the blocker ball, the center. He's out on the screen. He can go downfield since the ball is thrown behind the line of scrimmage, resulting in a first down. Tim Redmond, the right guard, 240-pound sophomore from Naperville, Illinois, is hurt on the play, down on the field. He is the third member of the Southern Illinois team to be injured in this first quarter of play. Two minutes and 14 seconds to go in the first period. Mark Manbury, number 65, a freshman from Mount Lebanon, Pennsylvania, will come in to replace Redmond. Well, the offensive line of uh, Southern Illinois has been decimated with injuries all year. That's the reason they have some freshmen in there. Coming up today on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the WBA World Bantamweight Championship. That matches Jeff Chandler and Oscar Muniz. It comes live from Atlantic City. They met in a non-title bout back in July, and Muniz, who at that time was relatively unknown, laid one on Chandler. So Jeffrey out today defending his title uh, against uh, Muniz. We we'll also have the World Rhythmic Championships uh, for you in gymnastics. I was going to ask you, what is Rhythmic Gymnastic Championship? Such a gymnastic set to music. Set to music. All right. My daughter's going to get after me because she's a gymnast specialist. You can tell I haven't been to see it. <laughs> you will. Uh, you're <laughs> right now. <laughs> Backfield lineup behind the quarterback Johnson, Porky Field 44, Terry Green 39. And it is Green with a football. Hammered down after maybe a yard, maybe not that much. Boy, did Mark King, the left tackle, make a fine play penetrating, and he put his shoulder right into the ball carrier. There's nothing there. Both teams stressing defense by penetration, trying to get something, make something happen, not give up short yardage and hope to contain it. Tim Redmond has come back into the lineup now, so Tim's all right. He's back into his right guard spot, and back goes Rick Johnson to throw it. Gets rid of it quickly. A little shot over the middle to his tight end, Kerry Shepard, and Kerry is short of the first down as he slides on the Bermuda grass at the 48 of Western Carolina. Gilbert is now five out of five for 40 yards. Keith, he's showing, throwing very oh, short Gilbert passes. Johnson. Yeah, he's taking the, taking what the defense has given him, just the short passes, trying to run with the ball after the catch. Gilbert, on the other hand, uh, Western Carolina has chosen to go deep several times, but has not been successful. Back goes Rick Johnson again, penalty flag, and the whistle stop it. Keith, the quarterback tried to draw the defense offside by giving a, a loud, uh, unusual type of count, and I believe he drew his offensive men offside. Yep. Johnson tried to go up the line of scrimmage and give a very loud yell. Watch it on the replay in the very right side of your screen. You can see that he watched the jaws of Johnson go. 
zip. And then, of course, the offense couldn't stay still. The defense didn't bite. And the penalty occurred. Loss of five yards. Backs them up to the 47 of Southern Illinois. So Luke is now looking at third down and eight. But Corky Field and Derek Taylor lined up in the backfield. And Johnson to throw. Wants to set up a screen. He's got his screen set for Taylor. But Taylor, by this time, can't find any place to go. The number of blockers had diminished in front of him. And Western Carolina's defense caught up in the person of Clyde Simmons. Buffemeyer, number 75 on the left of the screen, really destroyed this play because he forced Johnson to throw the ball before he wanted to set up the screen. See number 75? He's rushing, and Johnson has no chance to really set up the screen to disguise and fool the defense. The defense were all right out there and make the play for no game. Buff Moyer was uh, a key defensive player in their comeback victory over Colgate. He had a great ball game. The first quarter is over here at the Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina, and we have no score in our NCAA 1AA title game. Once it was hard to find. He came out of Sylvania, Georgia, played his college football as a lean, lanky quarterback at Presbyterian, took him to the Tangerine Bowl. Then he played 1960-65 with the San Francisco 49ers, 15 seasons at Western Carolina. Bobby Waters. Drew Morrison to punt for Southern Illinois on fourth down and eight. Good snap this time and a good kick this time. A fair catch is going to be called back around the 11-yard line by Christy Kaiser for Western Carolina. That was a 43-yard punt. And there, I think, Frank, you can see the difference. Uh, as you said a moment ago, what happens when the snap is low, you've got rhythm. When the snap is high, you don't. Keith, as a punter, and every punter would tell you that a high snap, which uh, was the kick before this one, you have no chance to really get the ball on your foot perfectly. But a low snap, you just bring it up on that foot, and that was a perfect illustration of how it doesn't affect your kick. From the 11, it's first down for the catch. And they shift Eddie West to the wide side of the field, the tight end. Jeff Gilbert turns and hands quickly to his fullback. And Billy Ray Jones, a freshman from Buford, Georgia, 190-pounder, doesn't get much out of it. As Duncan Levester, a senior from Youngstown, Ohio, stepped in. He's playing the nose guard position now for Southern Illinois for the absence of Sterling Haywood, who suffered a knee injury. This is for the championship of 1AA. Yes, you do have championship playoffs in college football at 1AA, Division II, and Division III. And every other sport that NCAA sponsors. And we're going to talk about the Division 1A folks at halftime and their reluctance to establish a playoff system. The pass goes over the middle. It is intercepted on the deflection by Greg Schiff, the free safety. And the Salukis have it first down at the Western Carolina 20. From the end zone, you're going to watch the blocking, watch the backpedaling, watch the drop by Gilbert. He's looking at the receiver all the way. He throws an inside pattern. You can see that number four, Daniel, makes an outstanding play. And then the alertness of ship number 49 comes right in and his seven. Now we see the isolation. Daniel's playing it man for man. Perfect play. Gets his hand right in front, deflects the ball. Good alertness. Brings about the interception. First down, Salukis at the Carolina 20. Johnson turns, hands it off to Everett Wilson, a freshman in a tailback, and Wilson can't go anywhere. It was Lewis Cooper, number 81, outside linebacker, who's turned to play back in, and then Paul Abraham, the middle backer, put him away. Here are the stats for the first quarter. You can see that both offenses are having difficulty. Or to say it another way, the defenses seem to prevail. Southern Illinois is not doing anything rushing. That's a big surprise to us in the ball game so far. One turnover in the key factor. Most of the game has been played on the Southern, on the Southern Illinois side of the field up to this turnover. And now the Salukis have a big chance with Porky Field, the fullback, breaking the play, getting inside the 15. They'll pull him down at about the 11th. What is it about a fake pass and run? It just happens to be the most consistent play in most teams. 
Bears offense because teams are eager to rush the passer. They know if they're going to do any good in the pass defense, they have to apply pressure. It sets them up for the blocking, and the result's a good game. They need a yard for a first down. The ball is just short of the 10. Got to get just over the 10 to get the first down. And they've got it as Derek Taylor. Looking for a little daylight, didn't find it, so he just ran up the stack and found his way over the top. Both teams have been using more finesse offense, Keith, in the first quarter. Uh, this is the first drive that we've seen, really, where they are using a little power. A little right at them, north and south, uh, always uh, pins the defense down and helps your offense. It's close enough for the measurement, but it is a first down. No score with 12.49 to go in the first half. Southern Illinois has got to go virtually 10 yards for the touchdown in four plays. Coaches hate to get the ball uh, for the first down here. They'd rather have it on the 11-yard line where they'd have eight possible eight tries to score. Parker Field out of the lineup for a moment, dragging the leg. It's first down and goal to go. It'll be a nine-yard play if they catch it in. And they give it away to Taylor, and Taylor is right at the line of scrimmage where he is pinned down. I tell you, these two defensive units are impressive. Well, let's look at it from the ground level. You at home can see just the real action that takes place. These coaches always believe the pivotal area in a football game is right there. Look at the white jerseys around that ball carrier. That's good defense, gang tackling. There's a little bit of a loss on the play. The ball is square on the 10 now, so in effect, he wound up losing about a yard. Bruce Fibbs is in there at fullback right now. Here's the pass by Johnson. Pass to Taylor. Touchdown, Southern Illinois. From the end zone, you're going to see Taylor go out in the flat. Watch this. Now, the linebacker is supposed to cover it. For some reason, there's a mix-up in the coverage because you can see how wide open that he is. That's just a busted assignment by the Western Carolina defense. A linebacker should have been there covered. Ron Miller, number three, is on the field. A freshman from Belleville, Illinois. He has kicked 51, now 52 consecutive points after touchdown. And in 11 minutes and 45 seconds to play in the first half of this championship game, Southern Illinois goes on top, 7 to nothing. This is Mr. Time Boyle. remaining, you see, 11.45, 7 nothing. Salukis have taken the lead in the ball game. There are the numbers for the touchdown drive. After the interception, setting it up. Great play by the safety man, Ship. His sixth interception of the season. Only 20 yards to take it in. Well, that's a lot of passes to pick off, though. Stealing 34 in a season. That's a lot. It certainly it means you've got some ball hogs. <laughs> Miller's kick is high and short. Goes to Rashid at the seventh. Looking for the sidelines, and he won't get there. Well, he got there all right, but he went out of bounds, but he is well short of the 20. So, as Southern Illinois' coverage came across the field, stringing him out, they held him short of the 20. Let's check in with Tim Brent. Thank you very much, Keith. You know that Southern Illinois has scored first, but they have also incurred the most injuries. Corky Field, the starting fullback, for instance, hurt his knee on the last series. It has been packed in ice. He says he is going to try to get back in. They are going to tape it once Southern Illinois gets the football back. He actually uh, banged up that leg a week ago, I understand, and uh, there was some question through Wednesday as to whether or not he'd be able to play. But he's a tough youngster. He'll be there. Ball is on the 16-yard line. Leonard Williams and Billy Ray Jones are in the backfield. Oh, look at here. Williams coming on around the corner. He's, in, he's really quick, isn't he? He's got good speed, and it was a good call. Where it was a fake reverse to Rashid, and uh, Williams going to keep it. Could have resulted in a very long play. Still got about, what, seven yards, Keith? Number He's 20. Carried five times now and picked up 45 yards of the ball game. It'll be second down. Let's say four. Ball sitting up just beyond the 22. Long count. 
Means a checkoff probably. Pitch it wide to Williams. And the linebacker missed him. But oh, I'll tell you, that number 21, Terry Taylor didn't miss him. When the coaches said that he was a strong tackler, that's an understatement. Taylor runs a 4-3, 40-yard dash. Maybe the best player in their entire conference. Watch number 56, Collins, the linebacker, pursue out the side. You can see what speed he has, and now let's watch Taylor, number 21. Boom, right there, good play. Help from ship 49. Third down, three. Gilbert, little shovel pass to Williams. Williams gets the first down as he crosses the 30 and goes to the 34. Every time I see that play, I think of Jack Curtis. Oh, absolutely. Lee Gross Cup. This is a play that they use regularly. The only team I know in America that uses a shovel pass regularly. It's really what they call their fake pass and run. Rather than the quarterback hand the ball to the ball carrier, he shovels it forward to him, and you can see the natural hole there and the game resulting. Darcy is back in at tailback now. Williams goes out. First down for the Cats. At their own 34. Pitch it outside to Melvin Dorsey. He fumbles the football out of bounds, and Western Carolina will keep it. Fabre Collins, a senior out of Chicago, another hitter. That's the way he was introduced to me, is here is our hitter. And the leading tackler, and I can see why. Linebackers have to be very active, good feet. Their feet moving all the time. Diagnose the play and go after it and have the speed to do it. Collins fits that perfectly. Ball is on the 35, where it is second down and nine for Western Carolina. Southern Illinois leading seven to nothing at nine and a half to go in the first half. Gilbert still got it, getting pressure from the backside, and he is sacked. The ball is slammed loose. It is a live ball covered by Western Carolina. Back on the 28th, Ashley Sledge makes his second big play of the ball game. When you, when you have the rush coming and your receivers are covered, you have to convert the pattern to a short pattern. Instead, Gilbert is still trying to go deep. And from the backside, you see Sledge come all the way across and make the play and then a great effort. Keith, I didn't catch who it was. Stevenson, Stevenson, Charles Stevenson. Sophomore guard makes the play and Gilbert is leaving the ball game. He really took a lick. Willie Perkins will come in. He is a sophomore from Robbinsville, North Carolina. 5'11", 190. So Gilbert's out of there, having been damaged on the hit by Sledge. The ball is back on the 28 of Western Carolina. And it's third down and about 17. Tough place for Perkins to have to show up, but he handles a snap all right, and then he is just eaten up by Ed Norman. Number 74 just flew through the offensive blocking and down with Willie. On the left side of your screen, watch Ed Norman. Number 74 has eight sacks, and you can see exactly why. What makes a good player and be able to rush the pass? The quickness, the swim technique, and he goes right by the blocker and untouched and makes the tackle. Steve Cornegie in the punt. Into the wind, too, Keith. Pressure on, he gets it out. It's a Daniel. Oh, it is a Howitzer shot. Daniel has to back up all the way to his 24. And he is brought down at the 28. 58-yard punt. Oh, that Since gets you out of trouble, isn't it? Will it flip the field over? Eight minutes and 15 seconds to play in the first half. Timeout. For the Revision's 85 team. Well, it's that time of the year. He's everywhere. Chief, he's got to be in Fayetteville, Arkansas. I'm having Christmas tonight <laughs> with my only grandson. <laughs> he's got a long way to go. In a short time? You mean Grandpa's not going to be Santa Claus? No, I'm going to be handing out the presents. <laughs> my wife went crazy. On the 28th, first down for Southern Illinois now as Johnson, who's 7 out of 7 for 51 yards and a touchdown, puts it in the air and he hits his man, James Stevenson. And Stevenson's progress upfield is close to a first down before Miles Nicholson, the cornerback, laid a hit on him. 
Stevenson is junior college transfer from out in California. Gives a good push. Defensive back has to give a cushion on this part of the field. The timing has to be perfect. Good pass from Johnson right on the money and a good first down. Pickup of 11 yards on the play to the 39 with 7 minutes and 55 seconds to go in the first half. Southern Illinois on top by a touchdown. 7 to nothing. Western Carolina had a first and goal on the four and couldn't score. And here's Johnson again going to the air. Pressure on. They've got it. He is knocked down. Looks like Clyde Simmons. And Simmons and King on the right side of that defensive front, numbers 73 and 96 respectively. Boy, they are really quick people. Both uh, both those defensive ends have speed. You cup, uh, Simmons has six sacks, nine tackle for loss. Cooper's coming, and he actually, Cooper forces uh, uh, Johnson to go back to the left, and then the Simmons comes from the backside, the blind side. Johnson had no idea he was there. And the loss is back inside the 32. Second down, 17, maybe 18. They run it and get something out of it. Derek Taylor gets about six yards as he comes up to the 38. So it'll bring up third down and long. And let's check in on the condition of Jeff Gilbert, the Western Carolina quarterback with Tim Brandt. Keith, while well, the Western Carolina defense is working, the offense is already regrouping. I just talked to Jeff Gilbert. After that sack by Sledge, he said he took a real good shot and felt a lot of pain in his right rib, right below his arm. He says it is coming along now. The pain is starting to leave. He's raised his arm. He's going to try to go back into the ball game. He says it's still painful, but he's going to give it a shot. Okay. Third down, 12. 4 7 Illinois. Western Carolina fans on their feet, waving their flags and hollering defense. The flags, whistles, stop it. That'll back him up. It's against Southern Illinois. Too much time. Keith, Keith had tried to shift into the shotgun and it just couldn't get it done. Takes time. That's the third flag against Southern Illinois for 18 yards. That's Ray Dempsey. Time has elapsed for the quarterback call timeout. That's C.C. Daly. They call time here to talk. It's Dempsey talking with his quarterback, Johnson. And coming up, 5.30 Eastern, 4.30 Central. The 1983 championships of the USGA, United States Golf Association. Highlights include Larry Nelson's win over Watson, Tom Watson in the U.S. Open. Jan Stevenson's first U.S. Women's Open victory and Jay Siegel's second consecutive win for the U.S. Amateur title. And I had the pleasure yesterday of going out to a quite a golf course outside of town called Wild Dunes. It was a quiet, peaceful day, thank goodness. And all Keith talked about, if I just hit a couple of shots, I'd have shot 75. It was still a three-ball round. <laughs> a three-ball round on, on the Lynx course with the water. Good going. Hard for the open. Third down. And about 20. And out of the shotgun, Johnson looking to go deep with it. Has good protection. Goes deep with it. And hits James Stevenson for a first down. On the Western Carolina 49. Regardless of what people say, the shotgun does help. The, the quarterback has a chance to see the opening. Stevenson is going to get himself uncovered and stay there. Watch him roll his hands up, give me the ball, and he get and uh, Johnson puts it right on the shoulder, right on the numbers for the completion. First down, Southern Illinois at the Western Carolina 49. Boy, that, that's reaching in your hip pocket for a big play there. 550 to go on the first half. Western Carolina showing blitz, and it works. The running back Taylor never had a chance. The best time to blitz on first down to the wide side of the field. Teams like to run there for the big play. The call was perfect right in the teeth and uh, resulting in no gain. Rick Johnson, nine for nine. A little bit surprising as the Western Carolina team had the best passing record coming into this contest. Well, Southern Illinois now has won the ball 16 times in the game, Frank, and only six of those carries have resulted in games. Shut down the running game right now, Western Carolina has. Second down and 10. 
Johnson very quickly whips the ball over to Stevenson. Stevenson out here one on one. And Tiger Green was out there with him, but made no commitment on it because the ball came to Stevenson so quick. He just sort of froze Green. Good, good uh, signal call in. Uh, Johnson audibles at the line of scrimmage. You can see Tiger Green, number 44, is way off the receiver. You give any receiver that much time. You want to you, you want to be close enough where you can at least make the tackle when he catches it. But Green was so far, uh, Stevenson could run with the football and make extra yards. Johnson's now hit 10 passes in a row for 94 yards and a touchdown, and it's a first down at the Western Carolina 36. And hands the ball off to Taylor, and here goes Taylor inside the 15. This run by Taylor uh, is the play that Tom Osborne from Nebraska started running last year. The Taylor's going to step to the right, meaning we're going to have a reverse play. The guard's going to pull and trap out and look at the natural hole right there. Taylor then picks up the block of Stevenson. Wide receivers have to be blockers as well as catching the football and a nice game result. Stevenson got in a position, though, actually, where he couldn't block, but otherwise he'd have been called for zipping, whipping. But he's still gotten away enough to clear Taylor down to a first down at the 12 yard line of Western Carolina. And here goes Taylor again, hit behind the line of scrimmage by Lewis Cooper. Lewis Cooper, number 81, was all conference last year. This year, he was a preseason All American, injured, missed five games. He's really their bell cap, the best defensive football player that they have, big playmaker which was illustrated on that last snap. Lewis Cup of number 81. 6'2", 230 pounds. Very physical defensive end. The loss on the play is back outside the 16. It is second down and 14. And the timeout or a penalty play. Penalty gone. exceeded penalty. the 30 second, 25 second clock again. It's twice. That's third time, third Keith, time. The reason for that is that the bench is too slow getting the play in. The quarterback doesn't have time to call the play, get up the line of scrimmage, get the ball snapped. You've got to get your plays in quick enough to give the quarterback that chance to use his audibles and change the play if necessary. Here we look at Ray Dempsey giving, getting the play and giving it to their substitute coming in the ball game. The messengers are Cecil Ratcliffe and uh, Javel Heggs. Number 39, Green, the fullback, comes back in the ball game, substituting for field. And it's second down and 19. Johnson hands it off on a draw to Terry Green, the fullback. And Green gets it inside the 20, down to about the 17, maybe the 18. Let's see where they mark it. Third in long yardage. Your, your quarterback wants to be sure that he keeps the ball in position for the field goal. Not get sacked for a big loss or not throw for an interception. Be sure that if you're going to pass on long yardage, throw it incomplete, line up, and attempt the field goal. If the receivers are covered, of course. Two minutes and 37, 35 now, seconds to play in the first half. Third down at about 16 for Southern Illinois on the Western Carolina 18 yard line, and Johnson getting the pressure. He gets away for the moment, gets his pass off, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted by Steve Marshall. Well, Johnson was a fifth-year senior, but uh, he threw the ball in like maybe a sophomore because the receivers were all covered. He's rushed. Never throw the ball when you're going back away from the goal line. See, he's, he's packing up, and he has, can't put anything on the ball. In fact, he's nearly out of bounds. Yeah, Could but he been. saw that big old 75 yeah. Buff Moyer coming, and he said, whoa, buddy, I'm going to try to take care of you. Ratliff number 80 and Stevenson number 5, the two receivers. Let's see if it couldn't have been intercepted. Should have been. Ron Miller is in for a field goal try of 36 yards, and it is good. Miller, who had three field goals in the 23-7 win over Nevada Reno last week up at Carbondale, gets another one in the playoffs. And at 2.15 to go in the first half, it is now 10 to nothing. Southern Illinois leads Western Carolina. Easy. Western Carolina now to receive the kickoff. From Miller, Southern Illinois out to a 10-0 lead and time about gone in the first half for the Division I AA Championship, National Championship. Eric Rashid drifts over to the three, has a wedge in front of him. And 
it's a good return out to the 29. One of the factors that uh, differentiates 1AA from 1A is uh, the 1AA schools are limited to 75 maximum scholarships for grants and aid. And you've got another Southern Illinois player hurt on the field. That would be four. Keith, the disappointing thing for Western Carolina fans is the fact that their passing attack has not gotten on track. It seems to me that because of the man-for-man -man coverage, they're trying to go deep. You have to still throw the short passes, the possession-type passes that make the first downs, and then when the deep pass is there, then you go for it. So I think that we can look for uh, Western Carolina with Gilbert number 12 talking to Bob Waters, trying to get something started to make some first downs. Of course, uh, that would be the second half I'm talking about. Right now, he needs some big plays to with only two minutes and 10 seconds left to play. Of course, this has been a comeback team all year. They were down 23 nothing to Colgate, came back to win 24-23. They were behind uh, to Furman in the semifinal game last week, uh, seven to six, and then came back to get a two-point conversion and a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Keith, they were behind Holy Cross twice, yeah. 14 to seven and 21 to 14. Two minutes and 10 seconds to go in the first half. We've got a timeout for the injured Southern Illinois player with the Salukis leading the Catamounts 10 to nothing. A Christmas gift from Radio Shack. My granddaughter fell in love with the pedible portables at Radio Shack. The cuddly little animals with the radio inside. There was a lovable cat, a Pekingese, a wise owl, a country mouse, a cute spaniel, and a sad puppy. You tell me, how could I resist such a sweet face? The pedible portable radios from 1295 to 1595, only at Radio Shack. What keeps America going on a freezing day? Presto! What brings football fans up to Green Bay? Presto! A radiator could look this bad after just 10,000 miles of driving on weak, neglected antifreeze, while the Prestone radiator looks this good. That's the Prestone difference. Now go with Prestone and save. Buy two gallons right now, and we'll send you $2 back by mail. America, say it's with a non-titled part and Oscar Muniz won. Now they meet again and Jeff Chandler's crown is at stake. Plus the World Rhythmic Gymnastics Championships. ABC's Wide World of Sports today. The injured player Rick Spielman for Southern Illinois has trotted off the field. All right. So I expect we might see him some more. They've They've gotten people banged up, but uh, everybody but Haywood has come back into the ball game after they have been rattled around. Here we the ball is sitting on the 29. Here's the Western Carolina bench. They're a little bit dejected right now, but they have come from behind before, as we previously pointed out. First down for the catch. Now the Southern Illinois safety man, uh, the free safety ship dropped back a little bit, play a little deeper. And uh, Gilbert, not getting the snap cleanly, covers the football and keeps possession of it. Watch, watch Kaiser. The, we're we're going to have a replay. We won't On second down and ten, they come quickly back to the attack. And over the middle they go with it. It's picked off. Threw it right into the hands of Ship. His second interception of the ball game. And he works his way back down to the 35. And a penalty flag goes down. That was an ill-advised throw. Keith Ship was all conference, both as a sophomore and junior. He has intercepted coming into this game five passes. He has two now in this game, making seven. You can see the effort that he makes. Going up and catching the ball, but it was a terrible throw. There are four dark shirts around, one receiver. And a big penalty call here against Southern Illinois. Intercepting team, first down and 10. Backs them up 15 yards back to their own 49. So instead of having it down there around the 35, they're backed up across midfield with a penalty. But still, with a minute and 40 seconds to play, the way Johnson's been going in the game, they can get it down there. He sure, they sure could. They're mixing up the run and the pass, and Johnson has been as perfect as you can possibly be in a ball game. And he's going to put it up. 
Little swing out to Derek Taylor. Got a screen for him. Three blockers in front of him. Good pursuit by Western Carolina. And the gain goes to the catch. 48. Give him three. Paul Abraham and Richard Dukes making the defensive play. And coming up at halftime, the Fireman's Fun flashback. And you're going to enjoy this one. I, I just guarantee you, stay with us and watch it because it'll be fun. And uh, we have discussion, Frank and I, relative to Division 1A playoff. We'll be talking as well to both coaches and have highlights. Second down and seven. And they stay with it on the ground. Well, that's a little surprising. Very surprising with a 10 nothing lead, less than a minute to play, and your quarterback perfect in his completions. Move it down for at least another field goal in field goal range. Now they are in an obvious passing situation, so let's see whether or not the Cats load it up and send two or three or four. Block is rolling along. They haven't called time out, and they've got timeouts to spend. Got all three of them. Well, they could have used a couple of them here and had a chance. Four snaps. Johnson, with half a minute to play, gets it in the air. Taylor has it, and he's going to be short of his first down. Brought down by Paul Abraham. They still haven't called timeout. Nope. Well, they don't carry over, do they? <laughs> Not to the, the half of the next game, even. <laughs> well, the clock's going to run out, and Southern Illinois is going to be happy to go to the clubhouse with a 10 to nothing lead at halftime. And right now, here is Tim Brandt with Coach Bobby Waters of Western Carolina. Thank you very much, Keith. Fine football game defensively. You hurt yourself badly with a couple of turnovers offensively. Well, we are, Tim. We're not uh, keeping our poise very well on uh, offense. We, you know, we knew they were coming, and uh, we're not setting up, not blocking people, not throwing our patterns like we usually do. We just got to settle down and do it. We got time. We're not going to panic yet. Now, you stopped the run cold. I think 16 carries at one point. They had gained uh, yardage only six times out of that, but then he hit 10 passes in a row. And it looks like you're playing a little bit soft on the corner. Give them some cushion. We are. And we're not playing well in defense. The backfield. We're not playing aggressive enough. We're letting them get uh, too much cushion. Uh, and when we, unless we send backers uh, or some kind of blitz, we're not getting to the pass. We're giving them too much time. So we got to get better. We, you know, it's just a matter of us gaining our composure and getting after. Okay, buddy. Very Good much luck the second half. All right. So with the score, Southern Illinois 10, Western Carolina nothing. We'll be back with the halftime activities after this commercial message and a word from your local stations. We're at halftime of our Division 1AA championship game. Southern Illinois leading 10 0. Today's Fireman Fund flashback brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance and Fireman's Fund Insurance brought to you by an independent agent or broker. Today's Fireman's Fund flashback is brought to you by Fireman's Fund Insurance. And Fireman's Fund Insurance is brought to you by an independent agent near you. December 6, New York City, the annual National Football Foundation Hall of Fame dinner. Entering the hall, some great names, including this lanky fellow who grew up in Georgia, now from Arkansas, named Broyles, all duded up in his finery. He grew up in Decatur, Georgia, went to Georgia Tech to play college ball, football, basketball, baseball. He was the all-conference quarterback in 1946, ranking ahead of players like Y.A. Tittle and Charlie Conley. His coach at Tech, Bobby Dodd, recalls Broyles was not the swiftest of the swift. He caught a punt playing safety man, two-lane punted to us. Frank caught the ball about our 15-yard line. He ran 85 yards for a touchdown, and our men swear that they knocked down their man three times while Frank was making the run, and it took him exactly five minutes. Well, it was not quite five minutes, but believe me, Frank got a lot of blocking on that play because it took him a long time to go that 85 yards. But he was pretty swift in moving to his coaching career, just 22 years of age, when he got his first assistant's coaching job at Baylor. As a matter of fact, he was younger than some of the players he was coaching. Then he moved on to Florida with Bob Woodruff's staff. And then he came back to his alma mater as a Bobby Dodd assistant, and Coach Dodd says this about his success. Frank believed in everything that he was doing. If he put in a play, he made our players believe that this play would go for a touchdown. There's no question about it. This is the play. If he put in a defense, played pass defense, this will stop the other team. There's no doubt about it. And enthusiasm and confidence is absolutely necessary to becoming a great football coach. From Georgia Tech, 
His first head job at Missouri, where he had a winning season 1957 at 32 years of age, but just one year at Missouri, because the job he'd wanted all along suddenly became available and was his. The head football coaching job at the University of Arkansas, and among those he coached there, Barry Switzer, Oklahoma, Fred Akers of Texas, head coaches now. Lance Allworth, a great player in the Hall of Fame. Among his assistants, Tennessee's Johnny Majors, Iowa's Hayden Fry, and Doug Dickey, formerly of Tennessee and Florida. A fierce rivalry and a lasting friendship developed between Frank Broyles and Texas coach Darrell Royal during the rambunctious years of their career in the Southwest Conference. Oh, so many moments to remember from those Arkansas-Texas games. Like this one in 1962, when a fumble cost Arkansas an opportunity to win the ball game, and Texas came down and stuck it in the end zone to win it 7-3 to three with just 36 seconds to play. Then there was 1965. Texas came into the game ranked number one of the nation. Arkansas ranked number three. Bobby Crockett's catch kept the Razorbacks rolling. They eventually defeated Texas 27 to 24 as quarterback John Brittenham stuck it in the end zone. And it kept Arkansas's winning string going at 22 games. Then 1969. A little moment of attempted chicanery by Coach Broyles as he talked to his old friend, Darrell Royal. We had the biggest game we had was 1969. Frank uh, doesn't like to talk about that game, and I don't blame him, because they really were better prepared and probably should have won the ball game. But before the contest, we'd go over, and Frank came to me with this new idea. He said, we've got a, a marker on the other side away from the chains. And he said, uh, that way, we can put a marker right at, at the spot you have to go for the first down. And he said, your runners, when they hit the sideline over there, your runners, he kept saying, your runners, uh, you know, he's from Georgia, he kept saying, your runners will see how far they have to go to make first down. And I thought about that about five seconds, and I said, Frank, I believe that's going to help your pass receivers a lot more than it helps my, receiver, uh, my runners, so why don't we just not use that little gadget in this ball game? Well, that might have been a key decision by Terrell Royal because the great shootout was what they called it. It was for the national championship, and this remarkable play gave Texas the 15-14 win in the national title. It was a crushing defeat for Frank Broyles and his Arkansas Razorbacks. When it looked like they had it won, his children walked off the field with him, terribly disconsolate. He was greeted by President Nixon in the locker room. It was one of the great college football games of all time. And then in 1976 in Austin, both Darrell Royal and Frank Royals ended their coaching careers. His numbers, as you see, not bad. Barbara has tolerated him for more than three decades, raised their six children, and now you know who the strong one in the family is. It's kind of remarkable how life can turn for you. Frank Royals and I grew up 46 miles apart, never met until we were in our 40s, wound up working together in our 50s, and I guess we're having more fun than ever. And congratulations, Hall of Famer. Keith, that's terrible to pull that on somebody. I nearly passed out, and I know my family home did. They were screaming bloody murder, but thank you very much for that. That's wonderful. And in the last few days since you have had your moment and your entry into the Hall of Fame, there must have been times of reflection. Keith, very much so. The reflection of the people you associate with, the friends, the players, uh, you, can't, you can't buy that kind of friendship. And as I look back on it, I love coaching as much as any person who ever donned the cap. And uh, I wouldn't change anything except the 69 game right there. <laughs> Did you really try to wheedle a sideline marker? I sure did. One of my, I, no question about it, but I thought it might help his, but I knew it would help us. Darrell was exactly right on it. Well, I'll tell you one other thing about him. Don't ever get a hotel room under him on game day. He still gets up 5.30 every morning, those big size 12s clumping around. You can't sleep at all. But we're proud of you, and congratulations on your Hall of Fame, and may you have many more good years. Now, hear this. You know, for business insurance, Fireman's Fund fits most everyone, large or small. For example, it helps insure a business as global as Alice Chalmers or as local as Gershevsky Tractor, as big as the Chicago Tribune or the Cape Cod Chronicle, even the Boston Symphony. So for your business insurance, ask your independent agent about Fireman's Fund, large or small. This hat is just your size. In the yellow pages, Fireman's Fund Insurance Companies. Our NCAA Division I AA Championship game with Southern Illinois leading Western Carolina by a score of 10 to nothing. 
being brought to you by Chevrolet. Official U.S. cars and trucks of the 14th Olympic Winter Games. Chevrolet and you taking charge. By Radio Shack, your Christmas electronic store. And by Mr. Goodrich and General Motors Parts. Let's take a moment now with Frank Broyles and talk about college football playoffs. Now, Western Carolina today, Frank's playing their 15th game of the season. No other college teams ever played that many. They have playoffs at 1AA, which is virtually the same size uh, as the uh, 1A. They, they go to school. Uh, Division II people go to school. Division III people go to class. They graduate on time. They don't suffer academically because of missing time away from school because of these playoff games. It gives the school tremendous identity and viability from a fiscal sense. So why don't we do it at 1A? Well, Keith, there, there are two main objections. One, the bowls are very powerful. The conferences that have tie-ups with the bowls receive a, a lucrative amount of money, a, a large amount of money, something like uh, 10 million for the Rose Bowl or more. And they don't want to take a risk if they go into playoff that teams might be eliminated in the first round, and therefore they would lose that amount of money. The other thing is the coaches feel that 16 champions of the bowls, whoever, uh, whichever team wins, is better than having one. Their job is tough. They feel like that it's too much pressure on them now, and it will add pressure and cost coaches jobs. So the combination of the coaches not wanting it, but many of the coaches and, and powerful coaches, the bowls dead set against it. I don't see that we're going to get anything done on it in the very near future. You're not going to get anything done on it until, one, we eliminate this nonsense uh, of arguing that it's going to cripple the academic circumstances. Right. Because you know, and I know, that's just a smokescreen. There's nothing to it. The Rose Bowl is probably the key to the whole thing. Yeah. Because the Rose Bowl this year will, will pay more than $10 million. Next year, more than $11 million. Next year after that, $12 million. Now, you know also that the Pac-10 conference and the Big Ten conference are not going to walk away from that kind of money. And that kind of money for the Rose Bowl is coming from television. Keith, there's no question about it. Television has helped the bowls. Without the television, we would be in the playoffs. I believe that because the bowls would not be as popular. You cannot uh, fault the, the, the conferences that have these big tie-ups because of the money that's coming in. They are depending on that. But the thing is, playoffs would give a tremendous surge in fan interest. You cannot disregard the money that it would bring because it would help schools become self-supporting, give more money to academics, not take as much away for their football, for their athletic program. Not only that, you could improve your sports program. You could improve your women's sports program. And finally, the players themselves. I talked to these young players, and they told me how excited they were. I think it's a lasting, fulfilling, competitive experience that can be gained no other way. It's the name of the game. Number one, number one. That's what it's all about. Well, like I said, ain't going to happen anytime soon until they are pushed to a fiscal wall. And I would like to add this one other point to it, that bowl matchups are not dictated as much by television as some people are wont to argue, but they are determined in some instances by the conference champion qualifying. But always, bowl matchups are determined on the number of tickets that a visiting school will commit to buying and the number of tourists the amount of tourist dollar that they will bring into a city. Those are the salient ingredients that make the decisions for the bowl people in making their bowl matchups. So as far as the Division 1A playoff is concerned, it's some time away. But it's some time away because of money. Western Carolina University, a school making a name for itself. 7,000 students come to study in the university's six schools, here they can obtain bachelor's, master's, and education specialist degrees, as well as career foundations in business, education, nursing, and many other professions. Western Carolina University, at Cullowee, where the tranquility of an unspoiled land has been attracting an increasing number of educators and students who are committed to academic excellence. Southern Illinois University, located at Carbondale, was founded in 1874. SIU is a comprehensive university with an enrollment of over 22,000. Students find internationally known academic programs and a dedication to research and service at Southern. The beauty and warmth of the region and its people provides a home for Southern students and alumni. Southern Illinois University, quality education in a friendly atmosphere. 
Radio Shack. Brief highlights out of the first half of play. You watch here on this attempted pass. Uh, Gilbert to Rashid. Deflected by Daniel. Intercepted by Greg Ship. Just uh, excellent pass defense, Keith. Couldn't play it any better. That puts Southern Illinois in position at the 20 to stick it in the end zone. And here, quarterback Johnson passes to the back out of the backfield, Taylor. See how wide open he is. A mistake in the coverage allowed that to happen. And Greg Ship surfaces one more time for his second interception of the day. As you see, Gilbert still insisting on throwing the ball long. He puts it down in a crowd. His one white shirt and four dark shirts. And guess who won? Oh, when the four against one, the defense has a big advantage, and you can see that uh, there was just no place to throw the ball. He should not have, have um, let it let leave his arm. So that uh, set up a field goal. There you are with a 10-0 Southern Illinois lead at halftime, and we're ready to play number two in a moment. Ooh, hot. Hot, so hot. Wendy's baked potatoes are... Wendy's stuffs them all kinds of ways. Hot. Like with cheese. Ooh, what a cheese. Chili and cheese. Bacon and cheese. Broccoli and cheese. Wendy's. Sour cream and chives. That pie. Wendy's stuff. Baked potatoes. They're hot. The Wendy's kind of people. Uh, you head coach Ray Dempsey. Ray, when we talked about the game in the beginning, we said the key would be their wide receivers and your defensive unit. Their wide receivers now, 4 of 11. They've only made four catches all day. Is that the key thus far? I think that's one of the keys. The other is our, we're able to move the ball on offense. But I'll tell you, those wide receivers are great. They can come back. And this do, team has come back. How do you hold the lead? What adjustments do you have to make? Well, we made some on offense to get better running. we got to move the ball and control it more. Defensively, stay pretty much the same. All right. Let's kick them off, okay? Thank you. All right. Let's go upstairs, Keith. Okay, Timmy. Biasucci will kick it off for Western Carolina. And Tony Adams will return it for Southern Illinois. The Salute is leading by a score of 10 to nothing. Low sailing kick that's going to bounce out of bounds. And that'll bring it back. Tony Adams had no chance to return that. Wyatt Simmons had a big first half defensively. So did Mark King for Western Carolina. Buff Moyer, that defensive front, Lewis Cooper is the other man. They're really good. They've played, hung in there very well. Ricky Pate, linebackers, 220-pounder. Paul Abraham in the middle at 220. And Bernard Jones at 205, the outside backer. The defensive secondary for Western Carolina lines up. We'll show them to you in a few minutes. Right now, as we wait for the second kickoff after the five-yard assessment, you see the halftime stats. The big surprise to everyone is the lack of passing yardage for Western Carolina. They've been averaging 233 yards a game. They've averaged 19. Give credit to the, to the uh, Southern Illinois defense and the Western Carolina coaches have got to decide are we running the wrong plays or they're just too good for us. They've got to make that decision, either changes or try to get with something different. I think they've got to quit insisting. They've got to take what the defense is given. They sure do, Keith. you got to go to the short people if the deep ones are covered. You cannot keep throwing the ball deep against the football team. They're playing piece to family like uh, Southern Illinois does with their defense. Ball is put up on the tee at the 35 now, and Bill Sutcher will kick it off again with Tony Adams back. And he's hooked this one, and this time it skitters on into the end zone. So they will come back out to the 20, where Southern Illinois goes to work for the first down. The defensive secondary for Western Carolina, Miles Nicholson is 6'1", 180. And Tiger Green, the other corner, is 6 feet, 185. Pretty good-sized people in that defensive secondary. Richard Dukes weighs in at 180, 6'2". And Steve Marshall, the free safety, at 6 feet, 170. The offensive alignment for Southern Illinois as we started the game. And Rick Johnson, story on him, he's 12 out of 13 for 103 yards in the first half and a touchdown. And here's the first defensive possession of the second half. He's going to put it up. Swing pass comes out to Taylor out of the backfield. He got two blocks, one inside, one outside, and turns it upfield and picks up about eight yards on the play. 
that's always a good call. The same play that they started the ball game with. A screen pass, just an extended of a sweep. It's very safe. Get your blockers out in front. And Redmond, the guard, made another key block. Ball the center, made the other one, spring him into the secondary. Give you an idea of why it's only 10 nothing here in this ball game. Western Carolina is averaging less than two yards on first downs, and Southern Illinois only four on first down. You need more yardage than that on your average on your first down play. Otherwise, you're going to have a defensive ball game, and that's what we've got. As Derek Taylor could find no place to go, the tacklers are led by Lewis Cooper. First downs in the second quarter, Western Carolina, one first down, total yards, one. What a defensive effort by the Southern Illinois football team. Five first downs in 94, you can see the big difference in the, in the two offenses. The football is setting just beyond the 28, where it is third down and about two. Run for it on the ground and don't get it. Everett Wilson, number six, 180 pounder from Memphis, slashed in there for Southern Illinois. It did not appear to me that he made it, and he didn't. He's about a half yard short. It's fourth down. I don't think you want to mess around with it here at a 10 nothing ball game. You want to kick it out of there. Well, we want to don't want to do what they did in the pro game last Sunday. Both coaches ran whole fourth down yep. and didn't make it on either occasion. Very wisely punt the ball. Defense is playing too good. Drew Morrison comes in to punt. He has two kicks so far in the game, 21 and 43 yards. And Christy Kaiser now goes back, sore ribs and all, to accept it for Western Carolina. And the block is old. High snap. But his protection holds up, and he gets a fairly decent kick out of it. And Kaiser calls a fair catch for the catch back on their own 31. It was a 39-yard punt. So Western Carolina comes out to snap the ball, and Southern Illinois sends out Mike Brescia at defensive end, 220-pounder. Ken Foster at tackle, 235. Sterling Haywood hurt, not going to play in the second half. Duncan Levester will be in there at nose guard. Ed Norman's a big fellow at 260, and Dan Wetzel at 210. There are your linebackers as Western Carolina comes up on first down from their 31. Trailing in the ball game by 10 to nothing. And shifting around in the backfield as Billy Ray Jones sets up a pullback and they pitch it back to Dorsey. And Melvin Dorsey has got maybe a yard, and that's all. The defensive secondary for Southern Illinois, and they are bold and daring, and they are good. Donnell Daniel, one of the corners, six feet, 190 pounds. Terry Taylor is the other corner, 5'10, 175. The safety people, William Thomas, the strong safety at 185, and Greg Schiff, who has two interceptions at 210 pounds, the free safety. He's kind of a roving linebacker with that size. It's second down nine. Ball on the 32, Leonard Williams, the tailback. Gilbert's pass, lofted in the air, down the sidelines, and incomplete. And uh, Christy Kaiser had uh, Terry Taylor right with him, step for step. The offensive unit you see there. And still, they're not going to short patterns. They're still trying to use that long sprint down the sidelines to affect something out of it. And they're just not going to be able to do it against those two corners, I don't think. The two corners have won every one of the individual battles on the pass pattern so far in this, in this ball game. Very, very outstanding play on their part. Taylor and Daniel. It's third down and nine from the 32 for Western Carolina. And again, Gilbert threw it right into the hand. I mean, it was an interception, but it was a gift to William Thomas. He had one man over there on double coverage, no chance in the world to complete the ball, and he just simply threw it right to Thomas. Keith, you described it perfectly because there was a man in front, Thomas, a man behind, Daniel, he was sandwiched, the receiver Richard was sandwiched between two men. The ball was nowhere near his offensive receiver. That is the sixth interception for Thomas, the strong safety. And Southern Illinois now is camped at the Western Carolina 37. First down. It's Taylor and Field, the setbacks behind Rick Johnson, who's having one of the best days of his career. They give it to Taylor. And Taylor counters it to the left side and picks up about six yards. 
when your defense can only do so much, the Western Carolina defense has played effectively. The interceptions and turnovers have set up the scores. Otherwise, it would be a nothing-to-nothing -nothing ball game. Turnovers, excessive turnovers, that is, will take you out of most any ball game they play. Well, it just it blunts your spirit. Oh, it does. It changes the momentum. This sudden exchange, your defense rests one play, and they're right back out there on their side of the field trying to defend the goal line. Call it second down and five. From the 33. And Johnson gives it to Field and Field. Playing with a sore leg will have a yard, and that's all. And that's the defensive right side over there. Help with the linebackers, Abraham and Jones, at stopping. Good linebackers just cover up the sins of any lineman or any weakness or whatever might happen. Linebackers have to be active and going, making plays all over the field. Four good linebackers in this ball game, two for each team. Third and five, shotgun. Johnson's pass, good. First Flag. down, Flag. tight end. Flag down, Keith, holding. Terry Shepard, the big tight end, had just curled it in the middle just beyond the marker, and the ball was on the money, but somebody had a hold of somebody's foot to it. Let's see if we can detect uh, from the end zone who it is is using the hands. Remember, you can use your hands on offense. You just can't hold. Holding is illegal. Uh, we see the umpire, the right of your screen, pull his handkerchief out and drops it right on the, probably the left offensive guard, which uh, could have been David Bach, the freshman number 64. Yeah, he was all tangled up over there with Mark King. So that backs him out beyond the 10-yard marker and makes a third down. And about 11. Out of the shotgun on the third down play. They've got some pressure on Johnson now. Buffmeyer chasing him. His pass is away to the sidelines, and the pass is complete to Stevenson. And he's got a first down. He is inside the 20, close to the 17. Stevenson is all the way on the left side. Now he's going to catch the ball on the right side. He's not designed to go that way until the quarterback scrambles, and then the receivers are taught a pattern to run to get in position to where they can be open if the quarterback is able to throw after his scramble and here's a perfect illustration of good execution. Let's mark him out of bounds at the 18-yard line and call it first down for Southern Illinois. Here in the third quarter of play, they lead 10 to nothing. And the pitch comes to Derek Taylor and Taylor behind one block on that side is able to get a yard. Lewis Cooper, 81. Leading the defenders along with Steve Martin. Johnson, the quarterback on that last play, Keith, uh, did an excellent job to get away from the rush. He's had a knee injury and an ankle injury. He missed two ball games. He doesn't scramble quite as effectively as he did last year, but on the pass play, it was a big one on third and long. Rick Johnson is a senior out of uh, Carroll Stream, Illinois. Taylor been busy today. He's picked up 39 yards himself and caught six passes for 41. In comparison of the quarterbacks and it reflects the score. Second down and eight. Play into the middle. It's inside the 15 to the 14 with Corky Field carrying. The Western Carolina defense is not giving up. Three turnovers setting up the Southern Illinois team right at the doorstep. They've come back and fought hard. minutes to play in the third quarter. Ten to nothing. Salukis from Carbondale. Johnson bootlegs it out. Going to go with it. Takes a dive at the corner and he just misses. Out at about the one. Steve Marshall shoved him out. Well, when the quarterback uh, fakes to one side, all the backs, the linemen pull that way. It's what we call a naked bootleg, and Cooper is fooled on the play, number 81. Even though we said Johnson's not a good runner, he has to keep it on this occasion, and he does and goes all the way down to the one-yard. the chalk back there on the five. On the five little. and the three. Yeah. <laughs> but he's marked at the one.
It is Taylor hit short. Oh, there was a collision at the top of the stack as Taylor tried to go over the top. I don't know who it was. Probably one of the linebackers came in there and just belted it. Well, the line, defensive lineman or submarine get the offensive lineman down where the linebackers can go over the top. Keep you exactly right. Abraham. No, number 85, Abraham, whose brother is an all-conference player at North Carolina State last year. It's about a foot away on second down and goal. And Johnson, the quarterback, falls in with it. Touchdown for the Salukis. When we are down on the goal line, you see the defense on the quarterback sneak. They just couldn't get under the offensive blockers. The offensive blockers got under the defending players, got a little surge, and the quarterback moves it right into the end zone. Johnson. The pass interceptions are stifling the opportunities uh, of Western Carolina to get some offense going. Not trying for number Citadel in Charleston, South Carolina. Number 22 for the Catamount. They're down by 17. It's a, been a great comeback year for them. And here's another one thrown up for grabs, literally, by Gilbert as the pressure was on. Number 56, Fabre Collins, was in his shirt before he turned around to look for a receiver. You can see how many men on the left of your screen that uh, Southern Illinois are rushing for the uh, put pressure on the passer. Uh, Gilbert had to do nothing but retreat. There's Collins right there. Look at him run. Look at the speed. He's right on top of him, forcing the, him to throw the ball away to avoid the loss. And it's second down and ten. Close, aren't they? Yeah, intimidated position. Again, the long pass. Rashid going for it. Penalty flag. Penalty flag thrown. You had two officials running with it, looking at it. And one of them pulled his flag. And I think you're going to get an interference call. The teams who play man for man know that they're going to get some interference calls because they're so close to him. You can see him shove him right there before the ball uh, was able to be called. And that is a definite pass interference by number 21, Taylor, the All-American. You're going to get some of those when you play that tight, Keith. Defensive pass and a break. All right, first down. Still, the two wide receivers have not caught a pass. Nope. They caught 148 previous to this game. Southern Illinois has been flagged seven times for 70 yards. At his first down, Western Carolina at the Saluki 48. Give it to Melvin Dorsey. And Dorsey just can't turn it around. Fabre Collins, 56, number 35, uh, had stepped in there as well. William Thomas and made him bounce to the outside. Oh, Keith, that's the way to play strong safety. Strong safety is combination in, linebacker and halfback. The play shows, and Thomas' is strong safety is in the backfield. Nothing there. Second down, 10. Gilbert gets his pass away, and it's incomplete. Threw it behind Eddie West, number 84. Ed West was out there by himself, but the ball was thrown hard and thrown behind him. That was the first little short pass that they've thrown to try to take advantage of the blitz. The tight end's the toughest man to cover, oh, man for man. You've got a strong safety or a linebacker. Many times it's a mismatch, and that's the one that Johnson's throwing to, Keith. He's been throwing the ball right over the line of scrimmage to the tight end. Those short, secure passes that keep the down markers moving. The West was wide open. He was good for at least eight yards on that play. It's third down. They're double wide to the top of the picture now. Gilbert has time. Throws it all the way across the field and completes a pass to Rashid, but it's only good for five yards. Any quarterback that has the arm to throw the ball all the way from the left hash mark to the boundary uh, and not have bring the court, the receiver back has got a rifle. Gilbert is not well right now. You can see he's limping a little bit. We can, and you can see the ball did not have the, the zip, the force on it, and Rashid had, had to come back and catch it. Well, he made the uh, 
he was hurt by the big hit on from Sledge in the first half, and he may be very stiff and sore. Keith, I think that that, that is definitely the case. He doesn't look good throwing the ball like he did earlier in practice. Terrible punt. Everything's going bad right now for Western Carolina's offensive and kicking people. That ball went right straight up in the air, and it's actually only a nine-yard punt. Once it was hard to find. Go to one of these days, look at the stats from this day. 26, 58, 9. He won't believe it. Keith, the reason I think is that uh, Southern Illinois has blocked nine punts and he's hurt. He's worried about it. So what could be the reason? From the 33, first down for Southern Illinois. Give it a Taylor now. They're just content to grind it out. Western Carolina may have to do a little bit of gambling once in a while with their defensive unit. But again, to go back to the point that Frank made a little while ago, the defensive people have played an outstanding football game. The, the offensive people haven't done anything. You can see why that uh, <coughs> Western Carolina has won, uh, hasn't lost in 12 straight games. Look at the pursuit, the white jersey. This is a perfect picture of how defense should be played. One, two, three, four, five men chasing the ball carry. Ball is sitting out near the 37, where it's second down. And a long six. Taylor again, bouncing to the outside. Nothing doing. They've got him behind the line of scrimmage. It was Lewis Cooper, big junior from Marion, South Carolina, that made the play for the Cats. When you run a delayed play, meaning the play is going to go one way and come back, you cannot allow penetration. Watch Buffer Miles 75, Cooper 81. Penetration, knock the guards off. Get in the backfield where the off guard cannot be the lead blocker, forcing Taylor to the outside. Cooper shows how the agility that he has. He possesses with a fine play for the loss. Back to the 33, where they started. Third and ten. Johnson looking to throw it. Cooper's after him. Passes away. Passes thrown out of bounds. Incomplete. And so it'll bring up fourth down. Cecil Ratliff was out there and had a step on the defender, but the ball, the quarterback Johnson just was under too much pressure and couldn't get to it. From Cooper, Cooper was chasing him and he had to throw Johnson at it, running backwards, and you cannot put any force on the ball. The punt coming up from Drew Morrison now, 21-43 and 39 are the distances of his three previous kicks. Christy Kaiser deep for Western Carolina. Last few offensive possessions for the Cats, not very good. Look at this. Beautiful kick, and it goes way back and out of bounds around the three-yard line. Oh, what a kick. Because of the safety made a mistake, he should have handled the ball. He could have gotten back to the 15 to 20. It's a 63-yard punt out of bounds on the three. A brief Carolina trailing 17 nothing. Got to start from their own three after that 63-yard punt. Kaiser should have handled it. He saved himself 20 yards. They lost 40 yards on that exchange of punts. Got to run it at that point of the field, and carrying the ball is Billy Ray Jones, and he gets a yard before Fabry Collins wrestles him down. Let's check in with Tim Brandt for a moment. Keith, just before Western Carolina got the ball this time, I talked to their quarterback, Jeff Gilbert. I asked him if his earlier sack, the pain, the rib, was giving him any problems. He said, absolutely not. There is no pain. He's just not sharp right now, and he's throwing some passes he'd love to have back. He certainly has. <laughs> he surely would. Second down and nine from the four. And they stay with it on the ground, trying to get Williams, Leonard Williams, out of there with it. He gets it up across the five to the six, so that brings up third down and about eight. Style of defense that Southern Illinois uses, the penetrating, the aggressive, the intimidating, is perfect for this part of the field. You expect the team to try to run the ball out. Consequently, they're running right into the teeth of the defense, and it brings up third and eight. We expect a pass here, scores what it is, 17 nothing behind it. Double pass goes to Billy Ray Jones, and Jones gets up field with it and gets the first down. Boy, there's a gutty effort. Oh, 
Oh, watch this play. What? Go back and watch this. I love it. It's so deceiving. I keep calling it. I did not see the shovel pass. I was watching the receivers downfield. Watch him just flick the ball. The hole is created by the, the lineman rushing across the line of scrimmage, but the effort by Jones, just the freshman, came in spring training. Mid watch him. He boards getting out of bounds, makes a second effort, and there's the yardage for the first down. Keeps the ball first down at the 18. The first first down in 20 minutes of play for the catch. Gilbert gets it off to Williams. And Williams is out at the 22. Four yards on that play. One thing in Gilbert, the quarterback's defense, he hasn't had much time. He, the rush, the the uh, by the the pressure, I should say, by the Southern Illinois defense has kept uh, Gilbert kind of thrown off of his heels. You can see seven out of 18, 41 yards. He's been throwing four average of 48 a game, completing yardage for 233 yards a game. Every Long time, way to go. Every time he's looked out of the corner of his eye, he's seen Wetzel 93 or Brasher 53. They've just been looping and making life miserable for him. And here they come again, unless they're just bluffing. Look at the people on the line of scrimmage. Well, he has good protection. His pass is away and intercepted by Greg Ship on the deflection. That's the third interception for Ship, and it ties a Division I AA championship record. Rashid is going out on once again. No well, man for man, watch Daniel, number four. How do you play man for man? You eyeball him. You don't take your eye off of him. You look at the passer, you're beaten on the plate. When the receiver stops, the defender stops. He comes right over the top of him, getting the collected ball. Once again, the free safety. That's free safety shift. That's his eighth interception of the year. And he's got three interceptions, and Daniel's got three assists. Yeah, that's a good point, Keith. Absolutely. And it's first down, Southern Illinois, on the 26th of Western Carolina, and Johnson trying to cash it in. Gets it away in the end zone. Stevenson touchdown. When you have time to throw the ball by scrambling, you buy time. Then you let the man for man coverage uh, take effect. Here's Stevenson right over the goal line. Now he sees the quarterback scrambling. The safety man, Marshall, number 46, is completely out of play. He should have stayed at home, and he could have covered it. The extra point try is good. That's 54 in a row for Miller, and now it is 24 to nothing, Southern Illinois. You've got 4.33 to play in the third quarter. Your Chevy dealer's big USA... Where we have characterized Western Carolina as a comeback team, they've been doing it all season. But they're right now getting pretty close to the hard place. I think they passed the rock already. <laughs> Keith, the problem with a team in this position is that the strength of the Southern Illinois defense is when they've got you in a hole, they are excellent at pressure on the passing. They forget the run. Kick is in the air, goes to Rashid at the six. Back to about the 22. Watch the touchdown again. Go back and you see Johnson, who had scrambled all the way over the left. Now he waits. Don't cross the line of scrimmage. You don't need the five-yard gain. Let your receivers outmaneuver the man for man. The safety man runs himself out of the play. Stevenson comes against the grain. You can see how wide open he is for the easy touchdown. Well, Gilbert's in there at quarterback. Let's see what Jeff can do with it. Again, the Salukis are all just right up, looking him right in the eyeball. They run that triple reverse. The flea flicker, the pass is thrown high, deep downfield, and intercepted by Terry Taylor. It was a wounded goose floating downfield, and Taylor just simply went over and made the catch like the receiver, and that is the fifth interception. The Let's fifth. Let's see what Rashid, the great receiver. Now, this young man, number one, is going to get the ball. He had been there on the receiving end of 87 passes in their 14 ball game. Gilbert just throws it up in hopes that the receiver can get down and catch the ball, but he throws it right in the hands of the All-American defensive back who comes down inbound, Taylor for the interception. 
Carolina defensive people didn't even have time to get their helmets on. It's a good thing it's turned cool and cloudy or they'd be exhausted. Been out there most of the ball game is keep pointed out. That's Derek Taylor. And from the 43 runs it up to the 46 for three yard pickup on the play. Defense cannot move the ball. Your defense sooner or later lose their momentum, they lose their confidence, and their play looks the same on film, Keith, to the coach, but the results aren't ever the same after they once lose that momentum and that desire. Just inevitable. inevitable. Time remaining, third quarter. Five interceptions by Southern Illinois, the most ever in a championship game. That's a good play. By number 14, Richard Dukes, the strong safety, stepped up at the line of scrimmage and brought down Taylor. The difference in the success of the two quarterbacks, I think, is due primarily to the pressure that Southern Illinois has applied to Gilbert and the lack of pressure, Keith, that uh, Western Carolina has applied to Johnson, their quarterback. He's had all day to wait to pick his receivers. He's looking at third and seven right here. Getting some heat now, but he gets it away. A play, however, is short of the first down to Terry Green, fullback, on a swing outside as he turned back to look for the ball. He could not turn his way back up the field. And again, here's Tim Brent. Thanks, Keith. Greg Ship, the hero of the game. You mentioned he set a record. He is on the bench right now. He has ice on his knee. He took a pretty good lick. We're not sure whether he's going to go back in the ball game, but with a 24 to nothing lead, let me tell you that all the points thus far have come to the Salukis after turnovers. Well, a coach can remember that. Excessive turnovers are disastrous to your chances. Drew Morrison, whose last punt was a 63-yarder, out of bounds on the three, longest of his career. High snap again and has to jump for it and doesn't come up with a very good kick, but it gets a marvelous roll and knocks it out of bounds on the nine. Well, nobody ever asked how. They just asked how far, right? That's correct. And with only one safety back, ten men faking the rush, it's impossible to cover to catch the bad kick. It's going to hit the ground. Bowl games coming up here on ABC Friday night, 8 o'clock Eastern time, December 30. The Florida Gators of Charlie Pell and Hayden Fry's Iowa Hawkeyes. The SEC in the Big Ten match up there. And it features two fine quarterbacks, Chuck Long of Iowa and Wayne Peace of Florida. And the Sugar Bowl coming up January 2nd, 8 p.m. Eastern Time, matching Auburn and Michigan. Both our bowl games. Oh, there's a safety in the end zone. Ken Foster brings Melvin Dorsey down to the end zone. And the Salukis add two more points. Ken, Ken Foster has been a, had an outstanding career. He's the tackle on the left of your screen. Number 76. He's going to keep penetrating. He's just relentless in his rush and you can see him reach out and wrap up the ball carrier and he falls into the end zone for the safety. Just a great effort. It has now become an utterly dominating ball game for Southern Illinois. Southern Illinois were six and five in their record last year and the coach Ray Dempsey told me that he said that after Johnson was declared eligible for an extra year that they felt like they had a chance and they made a commitment not to the public to themselves as we look at Bob Walters but they made a commitment to themselves that they were going to get in the playoffs and they won 10 straight games lost one and have won two more and Southern Illinois was ranked number one coming into this ball game you hear the rankings of division one two a poll Dempsey in his eighth year at Southern Illinois. The board of Pennsylvania is going to have uh, a happy night, isn't he? He certainly is, and his team has played well all in all three of the ball games. One astounding figure, Keith, that I, I noticed that in the first two playoff games, the opponents only had total offense combined of 200 yards. Just 100 yards per team that combined running and passing. That's sensational. That wins football games. <laughs> Western Carolina, after the safety now, has to kick it away, and they're going to place kick it. Isuchi will kick it from the 20. 
and that means uh, Southern Illinois will have good field position if they handle it. Pretty good kick. And he gets by and goes out of bounds. Has to kick it again. Got to do it again from the 15. Well, just everything in the world has turned against uh, the Western Carolina team. Coaches just get that feeling when it rains, it pours, because the other team, really what happens, the other team that you're playing picks up and they play better than they were expected to play. And then you're playing a little bit less and the margin of difference it increases and that makes for the one away ball game. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football presentation. Next Monday night, season finale, the Dallas Cowboys and the San Francisco 49ers. And uh, a lot of people are going to be concerned about that ball game because it's the last chance for the 49ers to win the Western Division, the NFC. Of course, that depends on what happens between Los Angeles and New Orleans on Sunday. Dallas is in the playoffs. But, uh, you'd like to go out of the regular season and into the playoffs with a win. And the Cowboys got crashed pretty soundly by the Washington Redskins last week. Two outstanding coaches, Bill Walsh and Tom Landry. Real class individuals, great coaches. Should be a heck of a ball game. And Joe Montana, uh -huh. what a football player. We saw him many times in Notre Dame. Sailing kick from the 15. Adams goes back over his shoulder, slips on the 15, does not touch the ground with his knee. Still alive at the 30, the 35, and whoa, look out! It's a foot race now. And finally, he is run down by Steve Marshall. I think the Western Carolina people thought he had stepped out of bounds back up around the 45, but he did not. There was an official right with him, and he runs that football from his 15 all the way back to the Western Carolina 13. Now we see Tony Adams. He had, he had great judgment. First, he makes a man miss him. That's paramount uh, on most kickoff and punt returns. You have to make somebody miss you till you get to the wall. He picks up his blocker. Now watch out as he turns down that field. He now has only one man, the free safety, the safety man number 46. Marshall finally makes the play, saving the touchdown. 72-yard run, first down to Lukies at the Western Carolina 13. It goes to Terry Green, sprinting for the corner, dive, touchdown. Nope, out of bounds. They mark him out. The trailing official has marked him out. Marked him out just inside the three. Well, Corky Field, the starting fullback, who's had a fine career at Southern Illinois, was injured and hadn't returned to the ball game. But the one thing that Ray Dempsey told me was, if he should get some injuries, his substitutes could play just about as effectively as their starters. He had some depth at both running back positions. Now well, we've moved the ball now inside the two. So it'll be about two yards for the touchdown. First and goal, but just inside the two. And it was the run back of Adams that made the difference. It is Everett Wilson. Fumbled the ball, did he? Yes, he fumbled the ball, and there, there was a Southern Illinois player right there to pick it up. Bounced right back to a player, number six. Right back to that, uh, old Wilson. You can see Wilson the, is the ball carrier, number six, and he's going right up the middle. The ball is going to pop out right at the goal line. This is a contact fumble. The ball is going to hit by the headgear. The ball is going to come out. You can see it right there. There it comes right there. It was scraped out by one of the players and it's in the air, but it comes right back and Wilson comes right back and falls on it. Second down and goal from the one. It's green and it's touchdown Southern Illinois. And it's turned into a rough. Very happy man, Ray Dempsey. Now from behind, watch the defense. See if they get moved back. Who wins the battle right at the line of scrimmage? You can see the surge, and the hole opens up, and Green goes right into the touchdown. Very easy. This will be uh, 55 consecutive points after, I believe. It's up, and boy, he split the heart. Split the Ron Miller has 55 consecutive conversions. 
with 56 seconds to play in the third quarter. It's now 33 to nothing. Let's go back and take another angle and watch the touchdown. Watch the surge of those white head gears on the left. Do they get under the block? Defensive end. Yes, they do. They move the defense back just enough for the ball carries momentum to take him into the end zone. Green, that is number 39. Go! Hey, go! Is a bit of a different thing that's happened in this ball game. Uh, we knew coming in that uh, Southern Illinois' defense was going to be a good, tough to handle, no question about it. But the way Western Carolina had uh, had played uh, over the last five weeks, in particular, and uh, each instance involving comebacks, we thought perhaps that Western Carolina might have the grit to come on back here in the second half and make a game of it. But the offensive people have come out and just they keep turning the ball over. And the defensive people are just beginning to wear down now. And here is the kick being returned by number 35, Billy Ray Jones, a fullback. And there's a penalty flag thrown back up field. And he fights his way out to about the 23. So let's see about the flag. Keith, while they're talking about the flag, to continue on the point that you make, we, we were talking about the defensive backs and how good they were. Daniel All-Conference, Taylor All-American, covering two receivers that had caught 148 passes. We'll continue. It's a clip against Western Carolina. How do you expect and how would you anticipate receivers that had caught 148 passes having caught one so far in this ball game? Well, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. No way. No way. The rush has to be a factor. The play of the defensive backs has to be a key factor. The passing has been off the mark is another uh, part in it. Combination is old three makes the score. And I'm going to get the score right. I'm not going to be like you <laughs> Birmingham. I'm going to read the scoreboard. 33 to nothing. <laughs> I got more kidding about that. I hadn't gone to Georgia Tech before my friend sent me a calculator. <laughs> he did. <laughs> Bob Davis. Can I borrow it? Mine's broken. <laughs> <laughs> From the, yeah, about the 11-yard line, Western Carolina, first down, and Jeff Gilbert now has no choice but to throw it. It's a little swing out there, complete to Preston, the fullback, and the screen works up to about the 19. Green passes are so safe, and they always seem to work when the team is really trying to rush the pass. So you let the defense across the line, but you disguise it. The quarterback stays in the pocket. He looks left, and that is what sets up the screen. Now you see the wall of blockers. The offensive lineman out in front, giving the ball carrier Preston a chance to make his cut. Greg Ship on the hit. And Western Carolina's Melvin Dorsey going for the first down. Gets it. Moved it just beyond the 22. Southern Illinois now with a 33 0 lead. They're able to relax a little bit. And uh, let Ship come on back there and play some center field along with uh, William Thomas. Two safety men now drop back a good five yards farther than they have been playing most of the game. This is uh, John Preston carrying. Penalty flag goes down as Preston turns it to the 27. Keith, it was a clip on the play. It appeared the offensive lineman trying to get out and reach the block. No, I didn't need this. Face mask. Yeah. Well, it's a break for in, in a play like that, though, Frank, it's always just a matter of the caught and the uncaught. That's right. The offensive guard was pulling and trying to cut the tackle down from the side. Penalty grabbing the face mask defense first down seven seconds to play in the third quarter not likely to get the playoff nope didn't do it so it's 33 nothing after three periods southern illinois and we'll be back for the final quarter after this commercial message and the word from our local state there. Rental truck, huh? What's the matter? Clutch burnt out? Oh, no, no. Oh, it's an automatic. Oh, the power. Let's go back and watch the play again. LaVesta, number 92, lined up right in the middle. He comes untouched. The center blocks to the left, picking up the linebacker. The guard blocks to the right. And you can see number 92 hits him as he's releasing the ball. And uh, Perkins is still out on the field. 
getting some help. Well, the throwing motion, it could well be, it could be serious, is what I guess I'm, I need to say here, because of the awkward position he was in just releasing the football when contact was made. And uh, we have, like to say, we are told that it appears to be an injured leg. Well, they, it's unfortunate uh, to get in. Well, that was his first play, Keith? No, that was his third no. play. His third play. So we still got time out on the field for Willie Perkins. Southern Illinois thinking about party time. It is a broken leg now, confirmed by Coach Bobby Waters as best he could confirm it, and leaving on a stretcher and headed for the hospital is Willie Perkins, and that's bad luck. On a bad day for the Western Carolina Catamounts, and now on fourth down, they've got to kick it out of the end zone, and the punter, Drew Morrison, is standing way back on the very back line. He's got to get a perfect snap here to have any hope by Steve Cornegie, not Morrison, to get it out, and he does get it out, and knocks it out of bounds up around the 38. So Cornegi hits it uh, 37 yards. But Southern Illinois is once again deep on the Western Carolina side of the field with 11.57 to play in the ball game. Western Carolina 38, where Southern Illinois will take over the football. Southern Illinois sends the offensive unit out. First down at the Western Carolina 38. Carrying the ball, Terry Green. Pull back. Gain is down near the 35 as he went into the crowd on the sidelines. And the clock rolling now. At a, uh, having stopped, rather, at 11.53 to play in the football game. And coming up at 5 Eastern time. 4 Central today, Jeff Chandler defends his WBA World Bantamweight Championship against Oscar Munez. Munez beat him in a 10-rounder. Here's a shot over the middle, the pass complete to Richard Blackman. And in then as he was going down, he hot-fingered it and couldn't get a hold of it. One thing that Johnson has done beautifully, and the difference in the ball game has been the execution of the quarterback. Not as all responsible for the quarterback, the plays called, being able to have good blocking, but as soon as the blitz shows, the linebackers are firing, the tight end has to be open. He just, West just couldn't hold it. I mean, Shepard, excuse me. Johnson is now 17 out of 22 for 185 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Pretty good day, and he's going to put it up again. And he throws it to this side to Mel Kersky, a freshman. And Kersky turns it downfield and comes away with about 13 yards, 12 once, yards. Once again, the screen pass, meaning he's going to fake, like look downfield, let the lineman try to get the rush. Johnson does a good job of acting. Then he throws the ball right out there to number 20. Taylor, I'm um, excuse me, Kirksey, and he cuts back and makes the first down. Screen pass is just part of the running game. It's very near the 25. They send Heggs in motion to the wide side, give it away to Kersky. And Kersky is hit right about the line of scrimmage. You know, when you get into a situation like this and the sky falls on you, and you forget your uh, nursery rhymes about Chicken Little and realize this is real and the pain you feel is real. It also is, a, is an emotional test for a football team and for, for that matter for a football program. And the man that's going to have to deal with that is Bobby Waters. He's going to have to go convince his young people that, uh, that they can uh, suck it up and come back next year and play. It's a young football team. They'll, they'll be strong again next year. If you're, you're right, and uh, this this does put a down on your program, but getting to the national championship is is encouraging. A ricochet, almost touchdown, slapped away by Tiger Green. Tiger Green just managed to get enough of it to knock it away from the grasp of Heggs, who was waiting for the ricochet to come down. Let's go back and, and take another look at it. Uh, you can see once again the ability of the senior quarterback to maneuver around, and the ball goes right through the hands, and, and it was fortunately one wasn't completed for another touchdown. As Tony Adams, uh, yeah. for whom it was intended, bounced off him. 
Again, Johnson goes to the air, hits Adams, and Adams is laid to rest by number 17, Miles Nicholson. That's his tough a hit that we have seen all year. Nicholson has eight interceptions. You can see why he's good on pass defense. Changing direction, breaking on the ball, ball reaction, whatever you want to call it. Watch to your right of your screen. You're going to see some collision right here. 17. Nicholson's going to hit him just as the ball gets there. The helmet right on the numbers. You couldn't ask for a better tackle. Now let's take another look from a different angle. You can see the collision right there. 17 just turns the receiver down. How he held on that ball, I don't know, but he did. The ball was kind of sandwiched in between yeah, them. It was lodged in between them. He couldn't fall out. Well, Tony had started to get up, but then finally realized the futility of the effort and it's very <laughs> quietly subsided back onto the grass. Because he was really whacked. Nine different Southern Illinois players have caught passes in the game. Let's go back and see it again. The collision is so much force behind because they're going at 180 degrees. One in the same direction, the other coming oppositely, opposite direction, I should say, and that's what makes the force so powerful. Well, I'm going to ask you a question now. We've had some hitting in the ball game. We know that. These young people came out here in this championship game, national championship. They're going to play as hard as they can play. Western Carolina has played uh, 15 ball games, 14 now for um, uh, Southern Illinois. And uh, it raises the, the obvious question that other people are going to be raising, I'm sure. And those who defend uh, the stance against playoffs, they're going to say you play too long, you get hurt. Well, the percentages are there, Keith. We're in commercial. Now they meet again. 33 to nothing ball game with 10 minutes and 23 seconds, and they're still attending to Tony Adams. So the, the injuries that we have had have been contact or collision injuries. And uh, Willie Perkins, we had to take him off the field a little while ago on a stretcher with a broken leg. So the injuries are kind of continuing to mount here. And you can certainly understand why Tony Adams would uh, be shaken considerably by Miles Nicholson's hit on this play right here. Nicholson gets a good break on the ball. And uh, you can see he puts a helmet right under uh, the... Uh, Chest bone. Yeah. yeah, right on the chin, really. He's walking off, though. That's good. That's good. Oh, he's young and resilient. Really receivers, are, right? are, receivers are, Keith, really. When they catch that ball, they're loose most of the time, and they're resilient enough to take the blow. Here's Tim Brent. Keith, I just talked to Coach Ray Dempsey and a couple of the sports medicine people. They were worried about his neck, but his neck yep. is okay. His head has cleared a little bit. They're going to keep him out. It was a whale of a lick, but he's going to be okay. Yeah, it, uh, his head snapped back. I wondered about it myself, but I didn't want to speculate on it. It's first down now for Southern Illinois. The ball is at the 10, and it's Sidney Bird carrying, and he's nailed for a loss behind the line of scrimmage and hit by Bernard Jones, number 99. Bernard Jones been very quiet today. I don't know where they've been running away from. And number 99, the Roddy screen is really a big playmaker, 6'5", 220. And he's the bandit, the, the uh, Terry Hogue position, Keith, at the uh, University of Georgia. Finally got in and made a big play. There's Tony Adams. They're checking the extremities of the hands to make sure he has feeling everywhere because they're still concerned about neck sprain or damage there. You have to be extremely careful. It is Kirksey carrying and Kursky is head tackled as he gets to about the nine, but I don't see a face mask call on it. Number 484, Tiger Green coming across to wrestle him down. Green is a fine defensive back. Four interceptions, one of the toughest hitters on the West Carolina team. He comes up, makes a tackle. Now, you really don't want to hit the man in the face. Uh, tackle at the neck. That uh, is very questionable. You, that's what we're trying to discourage in college football because it's, it's very dangerous. They've marked him closer to the seven. And Bruce Fibbs, 32, and Kersky, number 20. And now Kersky goes up into a flanker slot, and Fibbs has the ball. And he's gang tackled right about the line of scrimmage. And again, it is Tiger Green leading the surge from out of the secondary with help from Bernard Jones. Gang tackling, pursuit, be there together. 
Watch 44 support the run. As soon as he sees the run, he breaks the flanker's block, forces the run to come in, but watch the white shirts. One, two, three, four, five, six were coming in and helping on the play. That's a great picture. Good defense. down and they're going for a field goal of 23 yards. Ron Miller has hit one today from 36. He pops this one up and through. And at 7.48 to play in the football game, the score now goes to 36 nothing, Southern Illinois over Western Carolina. Here's Tim Brent. Thanks, Keith. Early in the ball game, Sterling Haywood went out with a knee injury. He's on the sidelines now and he's going to be okay, but I've got to ask you, 33 to nothing lead, have you seen a more physical ball club than Western Carolina? You know, we haven't seen too many people that's such physical. They're real physical, but our team was ready to play, you know. We won this championship real bad. Sterling, you know, coming into the ballgame, we had talked about the matchups. They have those two fine wide receivers. You guys, of course, pride yourselves in defense. Did not show any respect. You came right up, and you were man-to-man -man on them all the way. Oh, no. I tell you, tell you, Daniel Daniels and Greg Shipp, my, my brother Tony Haywood, all of them, they can watch these receivers. I don't think nobody can beat them. All right, you got all season to heal now. Yeah. Get that leg back, and we'll be looking for you. Thank you. Keith. All right. You ought to tell Santa Claus and his drum corps down there to quiet down when you're trying to talk. <laughs> I've got a headache already from that drum corps. But Haywood uh, was just, is just a sophomore. Started as a freshman at 5'10", 210-pound middle guard. Rashid, uh, he's got to come with it. He thought he was in the end zone. He started to kneel down, but he was standing right on the goal line. He had to bring it out. And he gets it out to about the 13, 14, maybe the 15, when he realized where he was. Keith, he really hesitates. He backs up. Yeah, I think he catches the ball on the two. Now he yeah. backs up. One, two steps. That's, the knee doesn't go down. He looks and sees where he is, and now he comes out. Everything that can go wrong does go wrong at the wrong time. And it's out at the 15. Call it where it's a first down for the Cats. Long day. Jeff Gilbert is back in at quarterback now with Perkins having been hurt. Been a nightmare for Jeff today. Little shovel pass inside to Billy Ray Jones, the fullback, and Jones gets it up to the 20. So that's the third time they've used it in the ball game. What we have seen and have seen this entire ball game is the front seven of Southern Illinois dominating the line of scrimmage, and there's nothing going to work, passing or running, when that happens. Gilbert swings it out to Dorsey. And Melvin Dorsey is hit by William Thomas, short of the line of scrimmage. Duncan Levester was chasing Jeff Gilbert and put him on his shirt. Let's go back and see if, uh, what happens to Gilbert on the last play. He's been hit a couple of times. Once again, uh, number, number 92, Levester, the middle guard playing for the injured Haywood, makes him throw the ball and gets hit hard. Well, they try to get something out of a draw. There's nothing there either. And they're trying to get that ball up for the first down, and they got it. By golly, he did. On his second effort, he got just enough of the ball across the yard spot to get his first down. Keep possession of it at the 25. Thrown to the sideline. The pass is complete to Tyrone DeLapp, and DeLapp running past the marker gets another first down for Western Carolina as he moves it up near the 37. Obviously, Southern Illinois sitting on a 36 to nothing lead with uh, six and a half minutes to play. There are people now dropped way back and playing center field, and you're getting a lot of the second unit people in now to get their shirts a little bit wet. John Wilson is in there at free safety now, replacing Greg Ship. On the first down play, Gilbert will put it up. He looks for Rashid. He's not available. He gives it to Dorsey, and Dorsey steps up the sidelines, crosses the 40, and goes out of bounds at the 44. Tony Haywood knocked him out. That's the brother of Spencer. Keith properly pointed out that the reason that they're having successful short passing, the defensive scheme has changed. The strategy, the concept, the philosophy is now bend but not break, concede the short and gang tackle. Don't let anything big happen against you. So the short passes are available, and they're taking advantage of it. I don't mean Spencer Hayward. He plays basketball. <laughs> Sterling Hayward. Second down, a yard and a half. For the first down, 
as Gilbert continues to throw. Now he's got it to Leonard Williams, and Williams has got the first down, and he gets on across midfield and out of bounds at the Southern Illinois 49. And you know Western Carolina now wants for their dignity, if nothing else, a touchdown. Levesta number 92, when he gets to the pass, so you say, hey, we're not going to let you. Let's block one, maybe two, and if you get away from him, we got somebody else to take you. You've been giving our passer a hard time. He's not going to get back on that occasion. So from the 49 of Southern Illinois, it's first down for Western Carolina. Gilbert's pass, throws it as far as he can. He's got Dorsey wide open and all alone, and Dorsey makes the catch down inside the 20. It could have been a touchdown if Johnson, uh, if Gilbert, rather, had been able to get the ball downfield to him. Let's watch it from the end zone. Uh, Gilbert's going to just stay in the pocket and stay in the pocket. The defense got enough pressure that he couldn't throw the ball hard. He had to throw it high. Look how wide open Dorsey did. Busted assignment somewhere because the back did not pick, a linebacker didn't pick him up. The back coming out of the backfield, he's wide open. And it's first down at the Southern Illinois 18. Gilbert goes to the end zone, and it's too low. At his man, too. Christy Kaiser was open, but he threw the ball too low. Here's Tim Brent. Thanks, Keith. When SIU gets the ball back, it'll be Darren Dixon, the quarterback, and I'm standing with a guy who had one well over the day. 19 completions out of 24, two touchdowns. Did you think it'd be this easy? Well, no, I didn't, and I'd just like to give all the glory and honor of the Lord for letting us be here and play this kind of football. Let me ask you something now. It looked like they were changing up a little. A lot of zone, but they did play some man. How much of the game plan was audibleized out there? Well, we get, they gave us a lot of situations to audible. Uh, they were playing a lot of man-to-man -man defense with their uh, cornerback eight yards off our receivers. That was a lot of cushions, so we took advantage of the short passes and things like that. Okay, Rick, congratulations. Great ball game. Thank you. Pass complete. Dial up. Touchdown. Nope, not a touchdown. By yeah. golly, he dropped that football. Keith, he, the ball was stripped by the defensive back. Uh, the, the receiver had the ball. Number, number 25 had the That's ball. The That's the lap. Now let's see what happens. Got shoved a couple of times. Number 27 is going to come right in there. That's Martin, the cornerback, and watch him pull the ball out with his right hand. Well, wouldn't that be a completed forward pass? It should have been. A completed forward pass and fumble. Take that many steps with it, it's completed. Third down and 10 at the 18. Here's the blitz. Into the corner, and they've got the touchdown. Christy Kaiser. Perfect timing. Execution has to be there. One, two, three steps by the quarterback. One, two, three. Let it go right now. The blitz is on. The receiver's got one step in behind the quarterback, Martin. Kaiser's right there, looks the ball in, pulls it in, falls for the touchdown. First catch of the day for Christy Kaiser. I mean, in this ball game, he only had 61 for the season. What a change. What a defense by Southern Illinois. Extra point try by Biasucci is good. So Western Carolina gets on the scoreboard with five minutes and 35 seconds to play in the game. Kaiser gets one step. Haywood hesitated just a moment. He shouldn't have. The ball is thrown perfectly over the shoulder. The defensive back. Kaiser goes up and pulls it in for the touchdown. Makes a difference when Terry Taylor and Donnell Daniel are not in the ball game, doesn't it? How uh, true it is. Those two great defensive halfbacks, Daniel and Taylor, have been sensational throughout the ball game and set the score amount to 36 to nothing before that touchdown. Western Carolina's Bisucci will kick it off. Onside. Batted out of there by Daniel, and he comes up with it. If Daniel is back in as part of the special teams, and he had the sense, realizing the ball was bouncing and he was surrounded by white shirts, he knocks it back down, feel it, gets the bounce. The decision is, do you want to go up and hit the ball before it goes 10 yards? And that was a wise decision. He knocked the ball forward, picks it up, it bounces right for him. And one thing that Ray Dempsey told me yesterday, he said, we're going to put our best players on all special teams. We believe in winning football games with the special teams. Our key players are out there. That's a good example as why they should be out there. And Darren Dixon comes in at quarterback now, a junior from New Orleans. So Rick Johnson is through for the day. 
Carrying it, Mel Kersky. And not much. Johnson, on his uh, completion percentage today, 76% on 19 out of 25, if Dave Bernson's arithmetic is correct. The old record was 75%. Well, uh, he's to be praised and congratulated because he identified the defenses of Western Carolina. He threw the short ones. He threw the out patterns. Whatever the defense spotted him, he went to the receiver. And when you do that, you have high percentage. Perfect, really perfect execution for Johnson. Four and a half minutes to play in the ball game. Second down, 11. A late handoff to Kersky, and um, Mel literally had no chance to do anything with it as they jump all over him right about the original line of scrimmage. One thing that Western Carolina continues to do, and that's get penetration. Well, they've done, a, I think, an excellent job of stopping the running game. As you can see, uh, Buffalo was back there in the backfield, slowed him down enough for his teammates to wrestle him to the ground. Well, this decision is in the bank at uh, 3.55 to play in the game. Southern Illinois leading 36 to 7. Keith mentioned to the fans about uh, how many teams from Illinois have had successful years. I mean, the football team, you were talking about that before the ball game. Well, Dixon back, loses his balance and falls down for a long loss. It'll bring up fourth down. Well, you've got the fighting Illini of Champaign on their way to the Rose Bowl to play UCLA. You had Augustana winning the Division Three. You've got Northern Illinois going out to play Cal State Fullerton in the California Bowl. And, of course, here you've got Southern Illinois winning the 1AA. Not a bad year. You know what my comment was? When the recruiters... Yes, the recruiters... <laughs> remember, the, the recruiters around the country realize they've got that many good football players. They're going to go to Illinois for their recruiting. Morrison is in the punt. Running back on his own side of the field, and Christy Kaiser is deep. It's going to be blocked. No, it is not blocked. And he did not hit the ball. He is roughed by Buff Moyer. And Mark Buff Moyer came through. If he had touched the football, it would have been all right. But he didn't tip the ball. He just clobbered Morrison. And so it's a penalty against Western Carolina. Let's go back and see it again. And Buff Moyer is going to come through. The high snap again. That's about the fourth high snap that we've had in this ball game. Now, Morrison tries to pull it down to kick it. Buff Moyer is going to run. I don't know how he misses the ball. The ball goes underneath his arms, and he gets the leg instead of the football. Rough the kicker. And it is an automatic first down today, I believe. It used to not be. Let's take another look at it and see exactly why Buffamoya misses the ball. Coming from the right up the middle, all he's got to do is block it. He has plenty of time. He goes over it, and the ball goes underneath, and it's a first down after the penalty. Two minutes and 53 seconds to play in the football game. Southern Illinois sitting down on the Western Carolina 24. And Darren Dixon is in at quarterback. You have to really give praise to Ray Dempsey and his staff preparing his the team uh, with his game plan, both offensively and defensively, has been outstanding. We've witnessed good coaching. Handed in the middle to number 42, uh, Sidney Bird, and... Uh, Buff Moyer is right there, and now we get penalty flags all over the place as we get a little scuffle going down on the field. Frustration on the part of Western Carolina, I am sure. They're, they're ejecting uh, Bernard, Bernard Jones, Jones, Jones yeah. from the ball game, number 899. John Campbell comes in to replace him. I'm not sure exactly what happened. I know that uh, the crowd was there. Let's see if we can see what 99 does. Yeah, he came in with a late hit and threw a punch. Yeah, there's the punch that uh, got him ejected. Frustration, disappointment. Taking his toll. Personal foul, defense, disqualification, defense, first down. I'll tell you, the Carolina defensive people have played well, though, because Southern Illinois has run the ball 42 times, and they've been running a lot lately, obviously, because uh, they're in control of the game and trying to run the clock off. 
but they've only picked up 68 yards on the ground. Normally when you stop the run that effectively you can also play the pass but Johnson the quarterback from Southern Illinois had a hot hand. Here comes Terry Green and he's down to the 16 on the carry on the first down play. The most valuable players in the ball game today for Western Carolina Lewis Cooper who had 11 tackles and a fumble recovery. And for Greg Ship, the free safety of Southern Illinois, four interceptions and played a strong game in all areas of defense. And the respective universities will receive from Chevrolet $1,000 each for their general academic scholarship fund in the names of those players, Lewis Cooper and Greg Ship. That's a fitting uh, end to a career by Greg Schiff, who is all-conference sophomore junior. Didn't make it this year. Daniel and Taylor made the all-conference team. It's Green blasting it over the left side and down to about the 10 yard line and let's check in now with Tim Brent. Thank you very much Keith. I'm with Greg Ship. Five interceptions in 12 games. You come in here today. You have four in one day. Uh, yes, uh, I knew we knew that they was going to pass a lot. So many our defense was built around the pass. So we had three defensive backs back on every plate. So uh, mainly, like I said, we was uh, pass on in defense today. Now you challenged them. You came right out. You rolled up on them. You stayed in man all day. I, I, I can hear the question. Talking about staying in man defense all day. Oh, yeah. Uh, we try to live with the man defense. We like to try to keep pressure on the quarterback to try to uh, rattle him a little bit. And it's paid off for us all year. Great way to go out. Keep. And as you're talking, Terry Green slashes into the corner of the end zone for a touchdown for Southern Illinois. And they have won their first adventure out into one double-A competition, Frank. That's not that bad. Ray, Ray Dempsey said that uh, this team uh, seemed to be destined. Things happened for them early. They won their first 10 ball games. And he says, we watched them play with Green again. But the thing that Ray Dempsey told me, he said they had the leadership in this football team. They had the desire and they had some good talent. They put it all together. 13-1 for record. Well, it's uh, sort of a weak knuckleball through there, but it's good. And uh, it is now for Miller, 56 conversions in a row. The pass down the middle, and it's almost intercepted. Slipped out of the hands of John Wilson, a big sophomore from Youngstown. But I want to make the point again about Western Carolina. It's a very young football team. And the folks around the Southern Conference, I'm sure, are not deceived by what happened here today. They'll have a fight on their hands every time they get involved with the Cats next year. Gilbert will be back. He's just a junior. He emerged this year and only attempted 17 passes before this season. But he's got a good senior year coming back, and he'll be another good one. 33 seconds to play as Gilbert again drops and gets it away under pressure and it's intercepted. That's eight times they've turned it over. Dave Burns is going back to his record book. <laughs> I spotted today and through the season has been Todd Berry. John Wilson comes away with the interception. I'll tell you, that's a magic position today. That ship had uh, four, and his backup, Wilson, made it five for the free safety. Free safety means you're the center fielder. You just play football like Willie Mays used to play center field for the baseball, and that's what's happened. Ball is down at the 25 of Southern Illinois, and 24 ticks remaining on the clock. Less Western Illinois, Western Carolina, call time out. This will be the last play. Back it in the middle with Sidney Bird and a penalty flag. Thank goodness. Oh, the clock will keep running after the penalty. Uh, as soon as they step the penalty off, they start the clock, and Southern Illinois can stay in the hump. 19 seconds. They don't have to snap it. Let's see what Ray Dempsey wants to do. These youngsters in there, the second team, they did probably like foul. the well enough. The the offensive team, first down. Started. They don't even start. The official busted. It. I'm gonna wait for the snap. Ended inside, and that'll do it. Executive producer of ABC Sports, Drew Norwich, coverage of today's game. 
as uh, they finally blew it dead with about seven seconds to play in the game. And I think is, is he out of bounds? Yes, he is, and the clock stops again. Coverage of today's game produced by Ned Simon, directed by Andy Sedaris, our technical director Bob Bernthal, associate director Jimmy Roberts, technical manager Gary Ricketts, unit manager Bob Zinke. And now they'll roll the clock, and it's over. Southern Illinois, the Salukis defeat. Western Carolina Catamounts 43 to 7 and win the Division 1 AA Collegiate Football Championship for 1983. who came out of Pennsylvania made his way through the coaching ranks to the head job at Southern Illinois gets a right off the field on the shoulders of his team they've got over 20,000 students at Southern Illinois but uh, they were satisfied by going to the one double a classification which uh, provides a limit of 75 scholarships they are only stumble they had during the 1983 season was rather late in the season to Wichita State, but they bounced back from that loss to win two more and regain their number one ranking among one AA teams, 85 of them. Western Carolina in the third game of the season seemed hopelessly out of a ball game, but fought their way back to win that ball game, and then it was a fight from there to the end of the season, and they reeled off three most impressive victories in order to get to this championship game. When they did, were down 23-0 to Colgate, came back to beat them. They trailed Holy Cross on two occasions, came back to beat them, and then in the semifinal game, the Southern Conference champion, Herman Paladins, they teed off with uh, Western Carolina and trailing 7-6 in the fourth quarter. The Catamounts came back to win that ball game 14-7, but today, no chance against the defensive unit of Southern Illinois. And with regard to the Western Carolina team, the coaches were telling me yesterday that after they lost their first two ball games, who would have thought they would have been playing for the national championship? But they made it. They had to be praised and congratulated. They fought through the ranks. They won. They were undefeated in 12 straight games. They got here. They were outmanned. They never gave up. They fought their hearts out. And I'm sure that they'll come back as a better football team next year. Gilbert returns as their quarterback. On the other hand, uh, Southern Illinois loses their quarterback, Johnson. They're going to have to replace him and uh, some of their running backs. But they do have most of their linemen returning. So it will be another great year for them. Eight turnovers in the ball game. Eight turnovers against Western Carolina. And when that happens to you, it'll take a lot of air out of any team's balloon, I'll guarantee you. So the final score is Southern Illinois, 43, for Western Carolina, 7. All right. There now for a quick preview of that upcoming fight. The clinch the NFC Western. That's quite a party they've got ready to go down to all of the tailgaters, isn't it? You know, traffic problems for them. Right now, here's a guy with a traffic problem in the midst of all that celebration, Tim Brent. Oh, Keith, and they're asking for Nebraska. I'm with two of the stars of the national champion at SIU, Terry Taylor and Donnell Daniel. And they were challenging you guys, and all week I heard uh, Eric Rashid, who is a fine receiver, say that if you rolled up on him in one one-on-one, -on -one, he could beat you, but you guys came out on top. Well, he's a pretty good receiver, but he couldn't handle me and Donnie. Now, you guys don't flip-flop, and he was going to both sides. Did he cause you any outstanding problems? No. You know, like, the firm, like we had called the firm coach you know, and asked him about their wideouts, you know, and he said we couldn't cover them. So we watched the film, and their defensive backs put, like, 10 yards off the ball, you know, and, like, they didn't have no pass rush. So, like, that was a ludicrous statement. But during the game, like, they tried us deep, like, the first three plays, so they couldn't beat us deep. So they start going to the quick outs and the quick curls, you know, and we was on them tight, you know. And then, like, Eric Rasheed was fast. Like, he didn't have a wizard, you know, to juke us off him. So, you know, it really was no problem. You know, we was confident from the start. We were confident at the end. They didn't catch no passes on us, so, you know. The thing that surprised me, and I've been out there before playing that man position, is that you gave him no cushion. I mean, you rolled up on him and you went on man. They tried to pick on me and Donnie, and they seen they couldn't get nothing. 
So they tried to work on Greg's tip. They couldn't get nothing on Greg either, so. Congratulations. So were the SIU, the national champion. Keith. Well, the day's about done. As uh, Tim Brandt, we almost lost Timmy in that crowd, and I understand we've lost our picture as well. So we have concluded the story of the 1983 Division I AA season, college football, and it came to an end in Charleston, South Carolina.